G'day, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. We are Chaosium's official live play channel, and we're here playing Call of Cthulhu. Now we're going to jump right into this session, so let's go ahead and meet our cast. Jackson, kick us off. Hey, I'd love to. I'm Jackson. I'm playing William Vanderven. When we last met, William uh, single-handedly saved the day by diving... <laughs> Thank you. Diving headfirst into yeah. the gaping maw of an enormous monster and shotgunning it to death from within. It was a good time. Yeah, I, I don't know if saved the day. I guess by every Who metric we can measure, he kind of did. Which you know, I'm as disappointed as anyone to say. But anyway, that's William. Uh Jim. Yes, hello. I I am Jim. I play Jose Castillo. I am the bodyguard of uh, Mr. Van de Van, and I, uh, out of professional pride, object to the idea that he single-handedly saved the day. I was there throwing rocks, attacking with a knife, and developing a crippling fear of plants. Oh yeah, that's right. So now you're not so big on the outside, and especially not that really big, dripping forest that lurks to the north. Uh, yeah, we don't really have Rachel here this week, but we're hopeful she'll be back soon. Um, Daniel, kick us off. Yeah, uh, I'm Daniel. I'm playing Detective Nick uh, DiMartino. Um, and uh, last... Yeah, I, I also reject the idea that Van de Van single-handedly saved the group. I was clearly there shooting a thing that had uh, resistances to all bullets. So I was helping, kind of. <laughs> I think we can confidently say that if you'd done the maximum amount of damage, you would have also single-handedly dealt with it, which is a lot of people doing things... Uh, sorry, a lot of things people are doing single-handedly. Yeah, I think we can all agree that single we all single-handedly yeah. saved the day. Together. <laughs> and that's what's important. Um, I'll take it. So yeah, you guys are currently in this sort of weird submerged world. You've begun to get a bit of a feel for the area. Shouldn't have said submerged. Subterranean. You guys are Atlanteans, or of Atlantean descent, so that is confusing. Um, you are in this subterranean world, and you're beginning to get a feel for it. So far, you've already rescued Dr. Nesbitt, who was a uh, director back at an institute, back on the top side of Earth. You've also saved Nora, Detective Nick DiMartino's sister, and now you've journeyed to this temple where you were supposed to be meeting with someone, a masked figure outside who would take you somewhere, give you some sort of information. It's all a little vague for the moment, but you're confident things will begin to clear up soon. Now this masked person has appeared. While you were having your fight, they came up outside and they uh, spoke with Edie and with Nora. Speak's not really the right word. They don't speak here. They communicate telepathically, and no one wanted to open a connection with this one, so instead, there were some sort of half-words shared between um, William, who is learning a little bit of Kinyani, and the uh, masked figure. There seems to be a respect formed, and the figure headed off, departing uh, the temple and indicating for you to follow. You've all hopped in the car, and you're beginning to trundle along after them. So as we pick back up, it's about five minutes after that fight's breaking out. So it was fairly intense, but any sort of bouts of madness have lapsed, uh, and you are now beginning to feel like yourselves again. The stress is beginning to ebb away, and the sort of pumping uh, adrenaline has worn off, leaving you tired. Edie's driving in the front, trundling down the foothills, and you're heading vaguely northwest. Maybe a little bit more north than west. Um, so yeah, are you guys talking about anything in particular, or are you just enjoying the drive? I think, uh, I think we're talking about, what the fuck was that thing that we just had to shoot? And it's why dead, is what it is. Oh, and why'd you jump into its mouth? Well, you, you, you saw it as best as I did, you know? The, 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 it was immune from bullets from the outside, but, uh, inside was a different story. That don't make no sense. Makes perfect sense. I've lent in, I'm, I've, I've got a, a, a handkerchief which is sorely stained by this point. I'm trying to brush goo and bits of monster off uh, Mr. Van der Van's uh, suit, which is another suit ruined, adding to the tally. And then that I'm might just, be yeah. my last one now. If that wasn't Great the last, story. this one definitely is. Yeah. Right. Is this a clear, like, backup suit? Is it kind of, you know, a little bit out of fashion, or is it still a nice one? Uh... Well, it's 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 the nightest one that I'll that I'll bring out up into the mountains. You know, I've got my evening wear back at the back at the condo. 
Um, I didn't forget. But it's, yeah. it's straightforward. It gets the it gets the job done. I think like a charcoal grey, perhaps. Very flashy. I think you're actually on not only the like fourth suit, but the fourth wave of suits because you have your nicer suits back at the uh, tower, which is possibly being taken over by an AI. You have your second nicest, which were left in a hotel before you descended when you had to make room for things like food and rope. And now you have burned your way through the third-rate suits, the most traveling of traveling. That's true. This one, these ones have like fashionable leather pads. I think. Yeah, and a holster for a rifle. Yeah, but uh, you know, get the job done. Yeah, still, still making it work. <laughs> Uh, so the other thing the three of you, well, four really, but Edie's being strangely silent, uh, that the three of you saw was while you were in the temple, you headed downstairs, and the area that this creature came out of, uh, there was a large mural in several pieces over the wall which seemed to be displaying some sort of ritual. There was also signs of passage, a snubbed sticker... Bleh. A stubbed cigarette which had been pushed into the floor, indicating that possibly Fontanelli and his crew had been here previously. This was seen by, I think, Edie and the detective, who made a note of it um, and can fill in the others, you know, as needed. Oh, yeah. I, it was actually spotted by uh, myself and uh, Nick. We went downstairs afterwards. Good catch. Uh, Edie was trying uh, to get the car in or thinking Yeah, yeah. So I've got the cigarette butt of turning it over in my hands, having a look at it, you know. The quarry is near, all the rest of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can, I've got them all, I don't, don't think I'm up to the Oh, yeah, speaking of which, can I? Uh, yeah, by all means. All right, and a light? Yeah. Okay. Um, we, uh, we, we, uh, do you think these people are leading us to some kind of passageway to follow after Fontanelli? I, I assume that's our hope here. Well, I, I suppose we have to listen to them. I mean, it seems to me Fontanelli's back, you know, was there there was like a tunnel there was like something going further down into the temple right no yeah, or is that was that down. a dead end oh no that was a dead end the that temple was you're there pretty was... sure you've seen the the entirety of it you didn't maybe didn't check every room but you got the feel no it went okay. no deeper it went no deeper than the room with the murals the gotcha. clairvoyant woman told us that if we wanted to get further down, we had to go to the temple, we had to find the man with the mask, and we had to follow him. Well, the man in the mask is up there, you know, and we're following. We're following, yeah. As best we can. I just don't know what it's going to involve going uh, deeper. I don't think uh, I don't think any of us do, really. Um, that, that, that mural had some sort of ritual on it of a woman being, like, torn apart and reformed and some sort of, like... Two spirits, yin and yang, and the world stuff. I, I didn't really look. It's not really my, it's not really my area of expertise. And was there a snake eating itself as well? Was that one of the motifs that was repeated? There wasn't a snake like eating itself, but there were two sort of intertwined entities. I will give my best artist's rendition. Um, basically, there's like two swirling figures consuming one another, very sort of yin yang esque. We will signify that with these two dots. Um, then there was... I'm just going through... through so uh, then it shows a larger one, which gives it sort of scale. And now you can see these two figures, and they're in a larger sphere with these sort of blocks all around the outside. Uh, so then we get to our next one. And we have a woman. And she's saying something. But, just like this table cuts it off, whatever event damaged the temple and possibly birthed these monsters you fought has ruined the text and the incantation for the spell rendering it unusable after that but Fontanelli probably got that information he was here before possibly before the, the building had collapsed after that yep you can see the woman she's being consumed by black fire um, sort of burning herself away then she appears uh, <laughs> an awful job. Bowing down. Actually, that's you get the intent. Yeah, I get um, it. I get, yeah, before yeah. the two figures, clearly worshiping, and it seems to be a sort of a she is worshiping them, and they are somehow giving her power or something okay. along those lines. So, so I, I, I had a conversation as well with one of the with one of the gents on the floor. Yeah, you were able to get a very, very good conversation going for someone with six points in Kinyani. Well, when you're that, like, when you've got your six points, 
it costs you five points a lot yeah. to to turn a success and it's when you're so success. naturally charismatic people just want to make the effort to talk to you that's what it is <laughs> um and i think they were describing the same ritual right because i and from my notes, they said things like worship, ceremony, constant forever, black flame, take over, consume, right? Monsters and things similar. Yeah. <laughs> they, they also said that people like me came through, but uh, only a few returned. All true. So it seems to me, uh, Aquari was the one that uh, woke up this monster. So we're just undoing what they did. That's true. I've had a look at... Uh at some of the old letters that we got. Specifically, I just had a look at some of the um, letters that uh, were written by Fontanelli to Argus, or more specifically by Fontanelli to whatever being is supposedly possessing Argus. Hmm. I think that it's worth, uh, I, we, with a little bit more information, I was hoping that we might notice something. And, and, and uh, here in this letter, I've, I've, I've kind of seen that they, they, they seem to be referring to um, the, the, you know, we're, we're getting to forbidden. Where is it? If forbidden Yun Ho truly lies between the poles, any path down must equally might equally take us there. I think that that is the closest thing that we seem to an objective uh, from this letter, apart from the line about um, finding bodies with bloodlines pure enough to uh, to to host uh, the, the 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 contemporaries, the brethren of of, of whoever, whatever. Argus is being possessed by. I think that it's safe to assume that they're trying to get down to some kind of forbidden ancient city, and it's not this one. This one's amazing enough as it is. There must be some kind of ultimate power, some kind of secret greater than just advanced technology, something deep, uh, maybe connected to this ritual down in the center of everything. I mean, maybe I'm just repeating what we've already learned here. Like no, it's good to have a city with we're under this city, you know. Happy city's all the way down. It doesn't it doesn't say city though. Yan, Yan right, Ho, yeah. Yan Ho could be anything. Could be these two spirits joined together. That probably is what Yan Ho is. I are there any creation myths about what could what something coming from the center of the, the earth? I, um, look, that's not really my area. I mean, there are lots of myths about a possible world in the center of the earth. I think Edie looked into quite a few before you left. Um, I you could that, make yeah. you could make an occult test. You could make Cthulhu Mythos if you're willing to risk it. Um, do Actually, you have my a, occult's not bad. Do you want to make a test, Nick? Or, or I mean, Jose, this is your thread. Do you want to pass this over, or do you want to run? I think with I it? was kind of asking. I was kind of asking the others. Um, yep. I, I'm, I'm, I, my occult knowledge is very limited to the, to the upbringing that I had. Yeah, my mythology knowledge is not big, but my occult is pretty good. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a think and see if I'm in if looking into the occult around. Uh... So you got 27. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got, a, I got a flat 20. Yeah, okay. Um, there, are, there are a lot of myths about a supposed, you know, uh, other world at the center of our own. There are those that believe there are dinosaurs still down there and that you can descend down to it from either the poles or through particularly deep caverns. Some believe that we originally emerged from down there, developed into ourselves once we arrived on the surface. Now, not many of these have a lot of credibility and there's never been any concrete proof in any way that these are true, but it is a common myth. It props up all across the world, and you're, as you piece together this information, recalling it from a dozen different cultures. Um, so it may have some thread. Was there anything in particular you'd want to know? Um, any suggestions? Uh, I, I guess... Um, uh, I mean, is, is, there, is there something about like a, like a spirit in the center or something like that? Seems to be the most obvious here, like like a divine. Well, being. I, I think we I think we know that there is something in there. It's more about what it does. What 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 is the purpose of it? Well, you does know, it we, destroy? It, does it bring? Yeah, does is it, there like a religion that says it's a great destroyer in the center of the earth, or is there one that says there's a great I know resurrector? Or uh... look with I I think you probably can 
dredge up examples that fit that. There are many that speak of a sun at the center of the earth, the idea being that it's a mirror of our own and that it's built around the sun. But anything concrete, concrete, like, uh, you know, a, a savior myth or, or one about annihilation doesn't really spring to mind. That would probably be more in the vein of the mythos if you wanted anything true. Okay. All right. Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose let's, let's hope that these people can just get us down there quickly. I think that any chance that we have to catch up to uh, Argus before, before they get there is going to help us. Yeah, I agree. And also, these guys don't seem to mean us any harm. Can I roll a psychology on them? Yeah, sure. So just to um, hold that for a moment, you guys yeah. have been talking for a couple hours um, you've been slowly driving along, heading through these large wastes. Edie has to do minimal driving, really. It's, it's flat roads, there's occasionally a crevice, but the path that they're taking on those large gorilla, rhin gorilla rhino-like creatures um, is pretty akin to that that a vehicle would need. They are walking in single file, marching ever forward, and you've kind of just joined their convoy. You've probably been talking for a few hours, and they show no signs of stopping. They've also paid fairly minimal um, interest, sorry, to you. They're kind of just going about their own business as if you've just joined them as they're bound on their own journey. Um, do you want to go ahead and give me a psychology test? It's going to be hard, just given the alien nature of them. You don't need to explain why, they, why it's hard for me to read people uh, that are almost a different species, I might say. Yes. Um, almost, I would say exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I, I uh, don't think... I, look, it's enough for a regular success, but not enough for a... You don't, you don't read any ill intent on them. They don't seem like they're driving you directly towards a trap, and eventually one of them falls back enough, uh, and makes to sort of gesture as if to tap Nick on the shoulder, who's riding shotgun in the passenger seat. But the window's there. Sort of taps towards you and then hits the window. You roll it down. Down Yeah, I got it. (laughs) You roll the window down, and as the others watch, it's on this large creature so that it's quite high above you. It slides off the saddle just enough to actually be riding behind it, still gripping on with one hand so it can continue to move forward, but low enough that it can peer into the interior of the car. And it looks at your gun, the rifle which you have, which is currently just in between your legs, leaning against the, uh, I guess, what should be an airbag, but almost definitely isn't. Um, It points towards the gun, then taps itself once, and and then puts a finger towards your chest and sort of pushes into your chest a little bit. It doesn't seem to be trying to make eye contact like they have done previously when they wanted to mind meld or speak. It just seems to be kind of, I don't know, saying something or maybe just uh, gauging your intent. I, pick up the, I pull the gun up and I go, you, you want to take a look? It's uh, real American engineering, you know, Smith and Weston. It's, it's a classic. You, and then it, I make sure it's unloaded. Yeah. Uh, and I like gesture to pass it to him. You, you pass like, it. You see if he wants it to. I'm not going to throw it out the window. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. You, you're talking and you sort of pat it and point at it. And um, as you hold it up to the window, it looks at it, gets really close, and you can hear it inhaling um, as it gets the breadth of it. Once you. Make sure you start looking to break that thing, mm-hmm. won't you? I, he'll be careful with it. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Um, once you're a little used to you sort of re-point it towards him again to telegraph intent, and he wraps one hand around it. You can see that he, like others, has had modifications. He's got a finger missing on one hand, but on the other one he's got two more, which come out of the palm, making it difficult to grip a weapon. Um, and then he pulls it out of the car window, and shortly after, you see the butt of a spear as he pushes his spear in towards your window. It's on a long wooden shaft, but the end blade is golden, and you can see a slot where one of those coins or tokens could be put inside. Sort of pushes it in, and it's too long to fit inside the car, really, so you're left with it going mostly out the window. 
and he falls back for a moment, hoisting himself back into the saddle, and continues to ride alongside you, now carrying the gun. I hope you didn't just trade that rifle for a spear there, Nick. Uh, um, look, I think I might have done it. <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't know that that's a bad trade. Well, what, what can the spear do that the gun can't? That's... I, I, I don't don't know, but we, here's, here's the thing. What we have thing? a few guns, but we don't have any of these spears. And this spear looks like it takes one of those battery things. I'm channeling a, a death glare energy from Rachel for having <laughs> traded away her rifle. Just FYI. I, uh, look, look, uh, uh, Edie's, Edie, Edie's good with, uh, good, like, she's a strong girl. She's good with hand-to-hand -hand stuff. She might, uh, she might want that. Look, the trade isn't finalized. But I, I, look, she might want to take a good look at this and see if, you know, I don't know what inserting that battery into this thing might do. This might be way more powerful than a gun. I don't All know. All right, well, I caution against trying it out while we're in a moving vehicle. That's all I'll say. Would you be, Davo, mm -hmm. uh, as, as the, the, the uh, keeper here, would the you keeper be right law, yes. for me passing it to... Um, to Edie to have a look at with Rachel not here. She could yep. One of we could, we can make a roll for us. Edie. We'll probably say she can't do it at the moment because you're continuing to drive, but she'll take a look as soon as you pause, see what she can glean from it. Uh, the rider that you pass the gun to falls back a little bit, enough to get around the spear, which is now sticking out of the passenger window, and he moves forward to rejoin the column. You see him lean forward with the gun and pass it to the one in front, who reaches backwards and grabs it without looking. Takes it, sniffs it as well, and you can see them share a glance before they pass it forward, and one by one, the gun makes its way up the column to the masked leader at the front. He takes it, looks it over, and then gazes back towards the car, which is rolling silently at the rear of the caravan. He then places it in a sort of a leather satchel, not satchel, sorry, like a band that's probably used for the holding the spears and sort of like holsters it on the side of his gorilla thing. A gesture towards the clip of rifle ammo that we now have and say, I wonder if we could trade him a box of bullets for uh, one of those coins to power a spear. Might be a worthwhile trade now. Yeah, I could see that. That, that's, a, that's a great idea, uh, Jose. You, you, you. Good, good uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not so sure if giving ammunition to these people uh, it could be a little bit premature yes. here. So far, they don't seem to mean us any harm. I mean, yeah, compared so to the far, other people but... we've come across here who were cutting people's things up, although they seem to be missing body parts and... All I'm saying, if it they makes don't... You feel, if it makes you feel better, sir, we'd also be taking ammunition away from them. And this way, we'd have enough coins for you to put one permanently inside your gun. Yeah, they, they, I just think they don't, they don't mean us any harm now. But if that changes, I'd rather them not have any ammo than them having ammo. That's that, a good that, point. That's all I'll say. Yeah, you're, you are right at the end of the day. I just remember that I can blame things as purpose and, and things. By just oh yeah, your power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I constantly forget about as a yeah. player. Um, so I would like to take off my glove and touch the spear and see if I can gleam any use of it that goes beyond what a conventional spear would be used for. Okay. As soon as you hold it uh, with yep. your ungloved hands, you get a wave of apathy floods over you and you have to physically force yourself to give a shit about what you remember you were doing. Um, go ahead and make a psychometry roll. Oh, oh, oh. What was I doing? Uh, and again, show that I've historically been terrible at, at, at um, psychometry rolls. I roll 17 over what I needed to roll. Okay. 17's worth it, isn't it? You 15, could lock it. 15. Let's lock it down 15. I want to succeed some of these rolls. <laughs> okay. Um, you find your mind cast backwards towards a singular previous event. It's as if you're directing the sphere to tell the story most pertinent to you. It could have taken you to any thousand times it's been cleaned or 
carried ritually, but what it shows you is the event when these people saw Leopold Fontanelli and a group of five other men. They were traveling, and this was not long ago, or at least you don't think. They were moving quickly and in earnest. They had small packs with them, enough for maybe half a day, a day's food to be carried, and they each had a large, like, Tommy gun, Tommy guns or shotguns slung over their shoulders, and they were jogging quickly. They were trying to outpace a group of six tribal warriors who were uh, astride the large beast you see here, all with spears leveled and hurtling towards Fontanelli and his crew. As they get closer, though, uh, Fontanelli whirls around, and you can see his face, and it's slightly different to the one that's in the back of his book, the only real insight you've gotten into him so far. It's watery. It's like it's not submerged in liquid, but it's like it's a thin skin over liquid. Rather than bone, it's just absent ripples, and his eyes are these black, black pinpricks in the center of his face. He opens a toothless maw and hurls abuse, but you can't understand it because you're in this other person's memory now and it just seems like gibberish. And as he holds his hand out, you can see black flames spill forth from it as if blood and destroy several of the charging warriors. The one who is carrying the spear barely wheels awa wields, wheels away um, and you can see that he's wounded probably lethally, and he slowly makes his way back to the tribe's encampment to deliver the story. Fontanelli and his crew only suffered one injury. And as you bring yourself back, despite this event, it's still primarily apathy. It's as if this was just something that happened. Look, oh man, listen. Ugh. These You're guys... Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, these guys... Uh, are no friends of Fontanelli. They don't really care about him. They don't really care about anything, but they, 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 Fontanelli killed a bunch of them. You were using your power, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was. Did you see where they were? Could you, could you lead us to where, they, where they've been? Maybe we can pick up the trail? Everything around it seemed hazy. I just sort of saw the event. Also, it all looks the same here, you know? Uh, well, we'll have to help, but they're going to lead us there. At least we know that they're not on the same side as Fontanelli, and that... Yeah, we have to project that Fontanelli is our enemy as well, you know? The enemy of our enemy is our friend. Uh, it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle, considering how much we, we look like him. We have the books. We have the books with Fontanelli's picture in it. We brought it with us. We have a whole library in this damned car. Yeah, yeah. We could, we could find that. We could use point. it and point it out to them. Gesture. We, we want him. We want to kill him. Yeah, that's that's a, not a bad idea. And now we know that we have a weapon. We, I mean, it, it's a pretty universal language, right? Show a picture, ram a spear into it. I like it. When we get there, we'll have to do that. Um, hey, uh, Van de Van. Yeah. You are the uh, you're the businessman here. Yeah. Um, here, why don't you take these? I hand you the the, um, the bullets, and I also sort of like I'll probably I'll probably also pass you the spear as best I can. It's now it. going through the like, center, past the center. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's taking the whole thing. The back's going down yeah. a bit. <laughs> um, I give you both of those, and I say, yeah. um, look, if you if you want, you can trade the the spear back for the rifle. Or you can trade the bullets for the batteries. It's up to you. I, I think we should just wait and see exactly what we're getting out of this entire arrangement. We, we don't want to, you know, play our hand too soon. As I it's said, negotiating one on one for you. So far, we're at a pretty good deal. We've given them an empty weapon, and we've gotten a good one in return. But ours is also empty. We got one. We got one. We got one. We can stick it in. But it, maybe but that's it all it needs. Maybe. I also fish out the book. Uh, I also, you know, the book these guys, the picture, and yeah. I'll, I'll give that to Van de Van to make sure that he can use that and leverage that if we get into a conversation. I also think these guys are not our enemy. They clearly don't like Fontanelli. They're different from the ones who existed in the city. These these, these guys are seem fine. They have yet to show us any sort of aggression. I think uh, it's, it's pretty assumptive to think that they're our friends as well. 
Yeah, I just got a gut feeling about way. them. What can I say? You get you get this kind of sense when you're on the force for a while. I suppose so. Well, let's, let's just wait and see for sure. Yeah. Right. You continue driving, and it's hours of travel. It's one of those really long road trips where there's nothing to do. There's no oncoming traffic to make sure you're in the right lane for. And after, you know, six hours or so, Edie's drumming the wheel. You're not even moving particularly quickly, but it's just this slow, constant plod. Does the group exactly. have any activities they fall back on? Is there a game of, like, sticks or whatever going on? A rousing sing-along? Or do you just sit in silence, hoping you get where you need to go? I spy I read a, with my little eye. <laughs> I read a novel. Yeah, we've out got loud? I, 100%. I pull, pull out the Three Musketeers and start tearing through it. Is, is this an out loud communal thing, or uh, are you reading for yourself and you divvy out books to everyone that wants one? Yeah, silently. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nora happily takes one as well and perches herself up in the back. She hasn't been given access to, like, a lot of literature in a while, and like these are Nick's books, she shares a fondness for reading, and she, emer- she just submerges herself in them, possibly finding comfort that she hasn't had in a while. I want to read Gulliver's Travels. Every now and then, Edie looks around, not glaring, but just kind of wanting to acknowledge that she needs to still drive, and it's great that everyone else is having so much fun. I'll offer to drive as well, for what it's worth. I have learnt a little bit. Uh, Actually, there is nothing going on, and Edie would like to take a look at that spear thing. So if you're willing to tag in for a bit, yeah, why why don't you do that? I'm just having a look at what her skills are. I reckon I'm gonna do a hard engineering test. It's gonna take six hours. Are we worried about fuel by now? You are definitely getting down towards the dregs. You have a couple of canisters in the back that if this continues, you're probably not looking at a return voyage. Not one that's particularly easy to make. I feel like we're past that, surely. I suspect you are. I mean, you are just continuing to move out. You're going at a slow and fairly steady pace, so you're not burning through a ton of fuel. Edie's also made some light modifications to just increase range, but yeah. Already now, you're probably beginning to consider that if this doesn't continue, you might not be able to get the car back, at least. Um, That being said, Edie is successful in having a look at the weapon. She begins to uh, consult with the tome about what it does. Um... Yeah, so as you suspected, it seems like this is activated by one of these small discs, coins, powers, batteries, whatever. Um, And once turned on, the blade will hum into life, becoming not only more powerful, but also more accurate. Uh, Once the disc is inserted, it can then be brought back out and you can use it again. The amount of power used is trivial, to be honest, and you could use this thing indefinitely. With that in mind, she's also probably beginning to get a bit more understanding of how the battery works and might have a bit more luck with trying to outfit the car for longer term travel. All good things. That sounds like a that sounds like a good use of that sounds like a pretty good trade to me. But there's no reason that they need to know that we have a battery. Let's let's be clear here. Again, I don't think there are any well, yeah. You're, you're, yet. you're the businessman. You're Not the businessman. Yes, I agree. Uh, as far as we can tell for now, but we don't we don't know what kind of culture we've walked in on. We, we, we're intruders here in a strange land. We, we could offend them without realizing it, so they don't mean us harm now, but uh, yeah, that, that'll, that'll change in a dime. Look, you're the businessman. You know what you're talking about. I'm going to let you. I'm going to leave it to you. After it, Was there any visual change after you put the battery in? She did not put it in. She knows that okay. she can. Excellent. Let's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, after all these hours of travel, and but it took you some time to get to the temple and everything, you're beginning to get a little bit tired. And at one point, you see one of the figures turn around and appraise you, uh, and then with a uh, sort of a, a circling motion, the creatures begin to close ranks and settle down, as if intending to stay overnight. They have been not moving with any great haste. Nothing about this reads as urgent. If anything, it might be a little concerning that you have places to be, and they seem to be calling it a day at the equivalent of, like, 6pm. 
Uh, I think also well, we actually haven't slept for a very long time. Yeah, I I think we, we might be. Yeah, we were meant rest. we were meant to have a, a rest when we got to the temple. Yeah. Okay, so you're so you're probably exhausted peak. then. This yeah, might we are all out. pretty tired, so I actually do think a rest is not a bad idea. Okay. But after that, I think we should make it clear that we need to find Argus, and he if we and he needs to you know. But the rest is, is definitely on the cards. All right. Um, the car's parked and Edie hops out the front to just check the engine, make sure everything's still running. And I will assume that she is beginning the process of converting this over to battery power, but I'm not going to make a roll for her. We're going to leave that until Rachel gets back and we will see if this car is going back the other way. Um, uh, Nora is probably more shares Jose and William's view about these people and is more nervous than not. She's not comfortable about this and she'll happily tag in for taking watches or whatever as you need. The rest of you can lower down the seats and make everything comfortable that you can take your uh, sleep in shifts. One thing of note though that's going to happen pretty early on is they go through satchels and they seem to bring out meat. It's dried, it's a bit sort of tough looking, uh, and as they pass it around between themselves in a small tight circle, they make no effort to offer it to you. And you are slightly aware that it, it looks sort of arm shaped, like that of a, a, a human or, or maybe a Kenyani. Yeah. Oh, I great. Mean, Cannibals. Okay, well. I think we still have some fish. Yeah, we're, I think we're good on food. I think more to the point, they're, they're cannibals. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if, if that's... Uh, I may have judged them. If, if, that's, if that's human, then it sounds strictly cannibalism, but I don't think that makes our situation any better. Yeah. <laughs> Eating sentient creatures. I, just... I guess, and let, let me... <laughs> I didn't expect I'd say this. Best case scenario, they're cannibals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Less, less good. I will admit that. Okay. So no one's going to try and you're not going to try and do the trade or the stabbing of Fontanelli or anything tonight. Oh, you're just going to... Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's... Well, I need, I need, a, I need a break. I need, a, I need a sleep. We could okay. save it for the morning. Take it easy. Yeah. All right. Everyone heads to sleep for a little while. You take your watches in shifts to make sure that there's never no one attending to the car at any period. Whenever any of you are awake, you look out over this blue tinted atmosphere. The sun doesn't rise, nor does it set. And the people before you seem not to sleep. Instead, they just take turns sort of meditating, staring off into the middle distance and occasionally working through this tough meat that they have to sort of like pull off with their teeth, chewing it thoughtfully and slowly over hours. Those large creatures that they ride and which you've now seen in a few different forms, that one fairly docile, inquisitive one, and then the one that was mind-controlled or something that swiped at Nick. Um, they roam around. They aren't tethered, and now that they're not being ridden, they seem curious as well. They're probably the ones that approach the car the most. Occasionally, from inside, you feel the whole vehicle shake a little bit as one of them pushes up against it, and as you blearily look up out the window, there is this huge horned face staring down through the window and keenly looking over everything that's inside, noting the books, the supplies, probably taking a bit of interest in the bear, which is beginning to smell a little bit. At one point you see one actually rise up and it sort of pushes at the bathtub a little bit. The ropes stay tight. It's not intending to damage anything, but it just seems to take a me the measure of it and it actually pulls down one of the books which you have stored in it, drops it on the earth, and then when it's horn, flips the pages open and just begins to sort of push it around. It's not reading. It doesn't seem to have the capacity to, but it just seems curious. Okay. Apart okay. from that, though. And if no one has... Well, there goes the Austin. You know... <laughs> <laughs> It's I also, mean, it's guess. like, it's like book three in the series and you just finished book two, Jose, and <laughs> ah. you've got four and five and you, ah, it's just a real pain in the ass. And that, and that was leather bound. <laughs> <laughs> that was a first edition. It was a first edition. It's been in the bathtub through several forests at this point. It was probably bugging. <laughs> it should not have been. <laughs> um, by the time oh. you've all rested, the people circled around seem to have a sixth sense and they begin to mount back up again. You shake those that are still asleep 
and begin to continue on your way. You we are. Regain our health. Yeah, definitely. Um, everyone can restore two points, with the exception of William, who is carrying the coin, who can restore four. Eventually, did that. eventually, I'm going, to be above, uh, I'm going to be above 66% health for the first time in this campaign since session one. Not if I can help so it. Eventually, meaning not now? Oh, no. Disappointing. <laughs> Heavens, no. <laughs> um, you're continuing you to... 30 hit points? You're a tank. Yeah. He's a machine. Jose is a big boy. Um, you're continuing to drive out into these wastes, and now in the distance, whenever you get up over one of these hills, you can see those huge forests um, a long way away. They are black, and it almost stains the land like water, where you can pick them up, shimmering ever so slightly. But that doesn't appear to be your destination. Instead, you slowly begin to make your way towards a um, congress of shelters where you can see a like a camp is set up. Probably a bit more of a permanent establishment than just a camp. There are maybe a dozen shelters built. They are made from what looks like hide and wood and fairly simple construction. Um, there are a couple more of these beasts which move around the outside, but no sign of the undead-like creatures which you've seen previously. Moving within the um, community, there are maybe 10 or so other Kenyani. They wear masks, the same as the others, and they seem to have more um, simple dress than the robes that you saw on the woman in the uh, farm or in the city. They take the measure of you and the returning people, but they part ways before you and make, make no attempt to interrupt your passage. Additionally, moving through the ground before you, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of snakes. They move and part like a sea of shimmering black scales, and occasionally you can see white markings underneath their neck or on some on the top of their head in a sort of a crescent moon shape, one that you've seen before on the bat, or vander bats, or whatever you called them. Snakes or bats. Snakes Snake or bats. bats, that was it. I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's my bad. Uh, they, when you get too close, rear up and open their mouths to hiss at you. You can practically smell the effervescent venom that drops down to the ground, sizzling where it lands. But they don't seem to attack you. And with the car, you roll slowly through the center of them, Edie taking her time to make sure that neither none are crushed nor are any of them aggravated. Eventually, and, you know, she doesn't probably doesn't need to take the time to make sure none are crushed. Just saying. <laughs> I, I can agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if a, couple ca if a couple snakes get smashed, we're not sweating it. Uh, eventually, it becomes clear that you are bound for a single tent, more towards the outskirts of the town. Um, you slowly get towards it, and um, you can see two things. One, the tent itself, and you've got a few minutes to have a slight conversation if you wish before you enter. Um, the mounted warriors are beginning to circle around it, making it clear that you will, you know, depart head inside and presumably have a conversation with someone. Um, and additionally, off to the side, there is a bonfire, I suppose, which has been constructed. The wood is black, different to that that you would have up on Earth, and it's presumably that same sort of wet wood which you've seen elsewhere, but it's been dried and not lashed, but laying across it are several corpses of Kinyani warriors, except they have had pieces of them hacked off where it is now sort of like dried in the absent sun. And occasionally you see one of them wandering back and forth when they cut off a piece and then they'll take it away and you can see some of them chewing on it or eating. Huh. Okay. So... In best case scenario, they're cannibals. Can I make a can I make a survival test? I'd like to get some kind of like some of the loose clothes that we have. You know, we we might not have very practical stuff. We do have an excess of cloth from uh, Mr. Van der Van's entire wardrobe, several of which are spoiled, and and kind of wrap a couple of uh, bits around my boots, trying to make some kind of makeshift anti snake garb. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Make a survival test. Just snake proof your How boots. How are the snakes reacting to the to the locals? Oh, they just swarm around them. Occasionally one of the locals takes a seat, 
moving down into a cross-legged position smoothly, and as they chew on a piece of one of their fallen comrade's flesh, the snakes surge over their lap, some coiling in place, others writhing around and then moving into their clothing to nestle against the warmth of their skin. They seem to be completely uh, symbiotic. How'd you go, Jose? One short of a fumble. Okay. <laughs> oh, that would have been great. Uh, yeah, no, look, you have, like, boots on, but these things are everywhere, and from what you've seen of them moving up and down the locals, they could climb your legs like a tree almost instantly. If they want to get past them, they'll get past them. Um, I hate it. The masked, the masked guy, is he going towards the tent? Because he seemed to be their leader. He is moving towards the tent, but he is not making to enter. He is holding the uh, the cloth aloft so that you may. The car is now beginning to rumble to a halt, uh, and it's getting to a point where you would be con consciously not going in or ignoring the situation. Uh, I think uh, Edie should stay with the car so that we are good to leave at any point should we need to make a lengthy getaway. Essentially, leave the car running. Yeah. Nora will hop into the passenger seat and underneath the uh, glove box, out of view, she will load a pistol. So just in case. Okay. Um, and then, do we want to go in? Yeah, well, let's, let's go in, in. yeah. Let's show okay, show let's... of force. Uh, mm -hmm. Just let me do the talking. Yeah. Do you want, would you, are we bring the spear and the, and the ammo as well? Sure, why not? Uh, keep the ammo hidden. Speaking yeah, no, of have. weaponry, I hate to be the biggest stick in the mud, but do we have extra pistols? You don't say that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my, my... <laughs> What? Did I miss something? You yeah, had dropped a hand out on the, sh on the center of the table. Oh, I, did, I, I didn't see that. <laughs> that Chat, either. please let us know what was dropped. We would. <laughs> Chat's allowed to see. You're not. All right, yeah, no, but I want Chat to tell us what it is because. <laughs> I mean, this is a pre-published campaign. If Chad really wanted to, they could just spoil the whole thing. So yeah. no, don't don't spoil stuff for us, Chad. Maintain the mystique. <laughs> no, right, I'm sorry. Win. I want to win Call of Cthulhu. Back to your preparations. <laughs> um, um, guns. How how many do we have? Pistols. Sorry to be sticking the mud once again, but do we have enough pistols for, for Nora to have one? I think you two have one each. Yeah. Well, she might have had one. Has she got her own? Is that what just happened? She's got her own pistol? No, I presume she was being given one or something. If she doesn't have one, oh. she can just pull out a little knife and be like, I'm ready to stab him. Okay, yeah, cool. I think we are pretty low on, on weaponry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any weapons at all. I just got my cane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. I'm well, not lying. <laughs> I, got, I got 44. <laughs> We got a 44 and a 9. I think it's 38. Whatever. Either way. He's got a wrench. 22. All right. Um, who's... Uh, oh, okay, someone's got to do this. I open the door and I step out oh. and, like, pray that the... Like, I slowly put my foot down, like, hope that the snakes slither away from me as I do so. You open the door and the vehicle's raised up a little bit so that it can clear mud and underbrush. And you have to hold the sides as you lower yourself down towards the snakes which seem to make no effort to part only when the tip of your boot touches on the back of one of them and it coils away moving enough just so that you can put a foot down on the ground and then immediately returns layering itself over the edge of your boot and then hissing as it moves back along the other side the last point of its tail just flicking underneath your trousers enough to graze flesh for but a moment your other foot goes down, and although the snakes mill around you and seem curious, they make no attempt to strike or to clamber up your frame. Uh, I continue. I go, okay, guys, seems good. Uh, and I continue to move towards the tent. You sort of hold your hands aloft, as if, you know, making yourself comfortable, and then keep walking forward towards the tent and the entrance. Um, William, Jose? I did the same. All right, you both yeah, follow suit. Jose, tapping, a bit tenderly. In front of me. Jose, you were. Do you have a history with snakes? I mean, you came from a region that probably has more of them than New York. You know, I don't have a, a particularly. What, what I have is a healthy respect for snakes. Yeah, that's fair. I get um, that. You know, I think I so, have one of those as well. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you know, we as, as as Australians, we can't we have that healthy respect for snakes. You know, it's yeah, just exactly. Kind of, oh God, I, I'm not particularly worried about them. But you, know. you just you're aware of what they can do. All right. A lot of statistics about snakes the other day. Yeah. yeah. One in three houses in Brisbane has a carpet bucket in it. Why? It just will statistically. That's right. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> That's <laughs> bad. Hey. Ugh. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on, indeed. Um, uh, so, you head towards the tent, and uh, Nick is the first one to step inside. It's dark within, and it takes a moment for you to adjust to the light. There is a fire pit in the center, but the wood inside has been reduced to burning coals that illuminate the area with a sort of a soft and shifting orange hue. There's no one else inside except at the back, propped up against uh, a wooden pillar, there is what first appears to be a corpse. The figure is Kenyani, but it is mummified. The skin is paper thin, and you can see where the meat has begun to sort of atrophy, um, and it has turned into like almost strings of veins and ligaments beneath the, uh, the skin. The eyes on the figure are open, but they are glazed and milky, and they stare through you and into the middle distance. As you walk in and you take the breadth of the rest of the room, though, which has a couple of rudimentary, sort of a a cot and some uh, closed bags, uh, you see a long, deep breath is taken, the figure's lungs fill, their chest rises, and then they let it out in a slow rattle that takes minutes. The other two can join, and you watch as the exhale is completed. No one else enters. It is just the three of you and the mummified figure. God. I'm not locking eyes with that thing. Um, uh, William Bandervan. Bandervan Shipping. I slide a card between some of the mummy cloths. <laughs> you place it. Are you putting it like in its in a pocket or in its hand? Yeah, in like, okay. yeah. like the breast pocket. You so fold it in between right sort of rotted linen, uh, and it is pushed against the skin where it sticks um, for a moment, and then slowly Ooh. falls down the floor. <laughs> uh, the eyes remain misty milky colored but the head shifts slightly and you hear a pop as it moves and becomes face to face with your own it has breath that smells faintly like sort of mildew or rot and mold and it begins to inhale again its eyes are centered on you but it isn't initiating anything but they're there for you if you wish to look into them do you have a little bit of clairvoyance, Vandeven? Do I? I? Telepathy. To... Uh, telepathy. Do I? I have psychic. Yeah. Ah. I, I think I tried to give I you telekinesis, that. but that is it is supposed to be psychic. Uh, no, I got psychic from um, getting the cards right at the. Uh... <laughs> oh no, you did get you got something from. Um... I got I got telepathy. It wasn't I got me. Tel- that was someone else. Yeah, you, I, you, you I got, am you not got, a magical strange <laughs> demon figure. I have nothing. <laughs> you got something from doing the cards, and I got telepathy. Okay, yeah, yeah it's you from, then. From yeah. communicating with the, Telepathy the, the is the one that is for communicating. Arm. But you're and aware that, in theory, anyone can open up a link between the two of you. You just have to be willing. Well, all right. Got it, Van Van? Might as well. Okay. We got you back, all right? I, I look into its eyes. All right. Um, Wait, so, you, so who else is in? There's no one else but us. So three of you yeah. and the mummy. Okay, so the, the, the masked figure who let us here just opened the door. Opened the door and stood to the side. Alrighty. Okay. Going in. You watch as your card falls down between the folds of cloth and then you lock eyes with the figure. Um, it takes a moment for your mind to interpret the images and the intent and the things that are being shown to you. But eventually you sort of water it down, get the essence of it, and what comes through is a slow, wheezing breath, which begins to speak. 
and show you images to support the information it's telling you. Deep below the earth, the balance of Nug and Yeb has been disturbed. Some day, Nug and Yeb must engulf the world in black flame and make ready the way. But the days of the cleansing are not yet. Let the Great Old Ones sleep in peace. The destruction that is being unleashed serves no purpose. The nearest temple of Nug and Yeb, full of decadent city dwellers fornicating in a parody of worship, has fallen. It is the first pained spasm of Nug and Yeb. Half-formed monsters have been born and spread out into the plains. The tribe's warriors have been hunting them down. The man who has disturbed the twin blasphemies is not of Kinyan, but his mind is untainted by the space devils. He has left his proper time. Our warriors confronted a group of men walking through the plains one day ago. All but one of the warriors were destroyed, only killing one of the outsiders in the exchange. The one made it back to the tribe and told his story before dying. The outsiders were surface dwellers, but they were monstrous and wielded strange powers. A vision fills your mind to support the story, and you see Leopold Fontanelli, or something similar to him, with his eyes black and bulging and skin rippling like water, the same image that Nick saw not long ago. The voice returns. Later, the tribe collected their dead warriors for ritual feasting, but left the monstrous corpse of the slain outsider where it lay. The temples of Nug and Yeb contain the Black Supplications, the nearest lies to the west of the plantation, harvested by the one known as Rigar Lil, but the supplications may be incomplete. Another temple lies far away, past the dripping forest and across the sea of still waters, and may hold the complete supplications. Those who recite the black supplications will be reborn before the twins. Should you seek the temple across the sea, Beware the dangers of the dripping forest. We, Tilya, only enter briefly for rites of passage and to gather sacred drubs. Only the vile Brigoon live there, but they have now returned to the All Mother. It is taboo to say more. The images that flow through you include Leopold Fontanelli. They include what sort of a rendition of the fight that supposedly took place. And when it mentions Nug and Yeb, you just feel black horror that heats your ears and chills your brain. As it mentions the dripping forest, you are keenly ripped from your current reality and placed in that sea of black trees and leaves to the north. And when it mentions the sea of still water, you are keenly aware of a thick and viscous ocean filled with corrosive acid. But beyond it, in theory, there is another temple undamaged that contains the rituals that Leopold Fontanelli and Ferdinand Argus were seeking. Um, I'm going to pass over... That's an image of the mummified figure, and that's their name. Uh, and here is a summary of what I just told you. And by summary, oh, so I mean word for word, word for print. Word. <laughs> so, I didn't, so I didn't have to panic and... No, 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 you're fine. In a, in a um, and yeah. Right. yeah. Um, I need a sanity test from yeah. Mr. Van Der Ven. Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs> you're the one who's seeing the visions of these <laughs> terrible things? No. Let's see how we go. Um, and this yeah. takes place over not very long, maybe a minute and a half, as the other two are watching. Van Der Ven goes completely still quiet and mirrors the breathing of the mummified figure before Ooh. inhaling a gasp and returning. Uh, how'd you go? Creepy. 48, all good. Okay, no points lost. You're able to handle it fine. Um, the figure's milky eyes seem to have a glimmer of clarity to them that weren't there previously, like a star hidden behind clouds, and they are watching you as you turn to your friends. Can we get rid of the carvings now? Yes. I'll give you a hand. Um, nice. All right. 
What, what'd you see? Oh, you know, bit of this, bit of that. Uh, well, we're, we're close. Fontanelli's down here. He, he's, Did you find he, a passageway that leads deeper? Uh, well, no. Uh, Fontanelli's looking for that, I think. Fontanelli's looking for a, a temple where he can perform a ritual to bring him closer to Nug and Yeb. Okay. What a nug, nug and yeb is that? Is that something that's in the center? Well, is that's that... the. I think that's the the two you know swirly bolly things that we saw in the temple back there. Can I curvings? Can I make a roll on nug and yeb? Either a cold boy howdy. It would definitely be Cthulhu Mythos. I tell you what, I'll give it a red hot go. go Am I right? A nug and yeb, the 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 bolly swirly thingies. You believe so? I believe. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Unless I want to lock that down 84 points, uh, that's a no. <laughs> Just the names send a sort of a creepy shiver down your back and you're born to mind twin horrors. You cast your mind back to the present and decide that maybe this path is not one to walk down just yet. Once the information has all been rallied to us, I, I, I suppose I said, listen, we... It sounds like that the, the, the path to get to the center is to find the rest of the black supplications, the, 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 the full spell that can bring us deeper. It sounds like that's at the temple across the water. Well, otherwise, so we're I... going to have to piece it together. It sounds like there might be enough of it at the other temple. Maybe if you passed your hand across it or something, Nick, you could figure out what the rest of it is. You could figure out what used to be carved there. Well, I don't, I don't think... Well, we, it's a, it, the spell itself is not that important to us. What we need to do is find Fontanelli and stuff him. Well, if yeah, he can but... catch up, but I'd say if he gets said... the, if he gets the, what 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 does it say? If if you read the black supplications, you will be born in front of Nug and Yev. Reborn in front of them. That sounds like a way to get deeper. That sounds like a way to be going further down. I we think might, that's what he wants. Yeah. We might still be playing catch up. We might if we can't get there in time. Wasn't it? It was only a day ago. Did they say that that they had an interaction with him? Well, so we should hurry. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. All right. So we think he's gone to the the temple beyond the sea. That's that's yeah. most likely. Oh, definitely. And we're close. We, we almost got it. Well, we're 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 on our way that way anyway. We just have to keep driving. Now, did I get? Did I get this thing's name from a normal conversation? What thing? The mummy. The mummy. Yeah. Yep. Um, you gain intent. You've entered its mind in some form. Uh, yeah, and it's... That's something along the lines of... Nix ya will. Nix ya will. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so how we pronounce it in our tongue. So you're saying we have to go, go through the dripping forest. Well... Yeah. Um, I guess so. What, what about the other place? What about the other the other temple? Isn't that an option? The Sea of Still Waters. No, we've already been there. We didn't get anything out of it. It's Wait, back in the other direction. That's further away from Argus. That's we, the way we came from. We're not going backwards. No, but there, are there three temples? There's the one that's fallen. There's one where the paint, the, the, the things might be incomplete. The, the, no, that was the temple we were just at. That was? All right. Yeah. I misunderstood. Oh, I believe so, but... Uh, no, no, I, that's right. I, the nearest lies the west of the plantation, the, the, harvest spotted by one by Riga Lil. Well, uh, we met Riga Lil, and yeah. they are no more. And, and filled with city folk. Yeah, it, it, it matches the description of the temple we were at almost perfectly. We, we, have, to keep, we have to keep going to the temple across the Sea of Still Waters. Um, good God, I... I, I if, that's where, if that's where Leopold, where Fontanelli's gone, then that's where we're going. All right. That's all I can say. Okay, I, I just I'm not comfortable about the idea of going through a, a forest with, full of things that we don't understand. And but we could do it though; it'll be fine. This whole it'll place is full of things we don't understand. I I understand your uh, your your hesitance, but we it just has to be done. There's nothing to be done. I okay. suppose I have a few more questions for uh, Nick's. Yeah, will uh, are they going to entertain that? The eyes glimmer in your direction. Uh, 
uh, our kinsmen are outsiders here. There's, there's no doubt about that. And we want to stop them. We think they're up to no good. So we want to ch chase them. We want to stop them doing any more harm down here. At least of all bothering uh, Messrs. Nug and Yeb. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna follow them. Is that does that sound like uh, it sounds like it's gonna be a bit of a, a rough time going through the, the dripping forest and the, the sea of still waters? But what do we think is the right thing to do? Um, the figure raises a single withered finger and touches itself square between the eyes and continues to stare at you. All uh, right. Well, uh, uh, excellent. Uh, that, that was a, a glowing, uh, <laughs> a glowing recommendation. Then, uh, I, I suppose we we also would like to see the body of this outsider. Is is that still nearby? The one that was killed by one of your warriors? And and no 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 hard feelings at all. But we should at least try to see it. It. Uh, pushes into its forehead with a single broken nail, enough to break the fl uh, the skin, which is paper-like, but there's no blood to drain. Draws it down for a moment, and you can see it's sort of like a cracked black flesh beneath the skin, and then it gestures outwards towards the masked warrior standing at the doors and the outside world. Oh, he'll be able to show us. Okay, much of a conversationalist. That's that's fine. You might find that he. You, are you are you saying this out loud or in your head? Uh, both. You have to say things in your head before you say them out loud. Uh, it turns to look at you, Nick, as you speak, and you can feel the intensity of its gaze prickling at your skin. Um. Okay. Um, uh, can I try to make eye contact and push my, my uh, mind meld? Yeah. As soon as you stare into its eyes, it's like falling into another consciousness. It takes a little while to find yourself again, reform yourself in another's mind, but you're in there, small and frail and a little bit weak, but you're, I mean, you still exist. Um, do you want to give me a uh, what do we call it? The flipping the roll? Telekinesis was it? Yeah, no, I'll not telekinesis. Telepathy. Telepathy. Telekinesis was the one I tried to give you that was wrong. Uh, make yeah. it, no, make it, make it telepathy roll. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're in there. This is if you can sort of this is if seize I have control. Super control yeah, yeah, over yeah. it. Uh, no, no, it's close. Okay. Yeah. You're in there, and it's like you're treading to just stay above water. You're confident that if you drown, it's up to it if it wants to let your brain back into your own body or if you'll die here in another person's mind but for the moment you have its attention you can feel the sort of area around you honing in on you and if you mm -hmm. wish you can try and project an intent okay can i project an image of something that has not happened you can try i want to project an image of of me shooting and or, or me uh let's say me stabbing uh fontanelli with the spear and and, and killing him it, uh, or the presence, appears to acknowledge what you've said, but there's no cheers, there's no boos. No, these things are historically very apathetic. It probably is it's just matter-of-fact about most of this. I just want to make sure it, it knew that. And can, in that case, I'll probably try to get out before I drown. Yeah, it's my you own. begin to sort of, like, tread water, and then you take a deep breath and you let yourself be submerged beneath the tranquil waves as water floods into your ears up your nose and past your eyes you take a gasp and jose and william see you draw breath for the <laughs> first time in the last four minutes and he was just oh beginning God. to oh be goodness. tinged a little bit red in his face uh, uh, i i think it knows our intention now but, all right, all right. Uh, it just doesn't care uh, well then, let's let's get out of here. Let's let's get going. It, it doesn't have anything for us. You've been very helpful. Thank you. And it I'll bow a little bit. It 
just gazes into the middle distance. But as you go, and William is you're the last one to leave the tent and you draw the flap closed behind it, you think you see it reach underneath its clothes to grab the card you passed it. And then you step outside and the masked warrior is towering above you. He's already mounted his creature again and with a spear aloft, he points it towards the dripping forest in the distance and then swings it down, still in the same direction, but closer, where it marks a point on the horizon. Closer to us than the, the like between us and the forest. Yes. Is it, uh, the snakes writhing around you bigger. part their ways, and Edie politely taps the horn <laughs> from the car. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, then, that's... Then, now's your last chance to make any trades you want to make. I think oh. you. But again, it's up to you. And then I, run, I, I, I like jog towards the car. Yep, you do these little hops and skips to get over any snakes that have begun to cross the path once more. And when you jump into the car, you settle yourself into the seat, comfortable again. Well, all right. Uh, can, can I can I try to communicate once more? What's your intent? What are you trying to? What are you trying okay. to get? Okay. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and trade the bullets, the rifle, the rifle rounds for a battery or two. Okay. Too. Yeah, give and me. I um, also want to know where that where that body is. Okay. Um, where's your where's your shady? Let's see. Um, so, and I'm pretty charming. You are supernaturally charming, I would say. I reckon. Do you want to go for charm? Do you want to give me an? Uh, uh, yes. I tell you what, a hard charm test will telegraph the intent of one. An extreme might get you both. This is also presupposing that you are willing to glance into their eyes and establish a link. Sure. Okay. Here we go. I've also got 79 luck, so... Oh, that's not good. Oh, no. What did you roll? Wow. Okay, 71. So a success. Oh, I was worried that was a fumble. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was a fumble. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, a like a fumble no, it's terrible for me. <laughs> I was I was meant to nail this. All right, so uh, 71 uh, hard is 42, 43. Your you alternative is you, should, you could try and push it. Uh, entering his mind is like pin dropping into the deep end of a pool. You're in darkness and you're surrounded by a apathetic presence. You're watching its thoughts and you're perceiving its perception of you. You're seeing yourself as this frail creature that did somehow slay this incredibly powerful monster. It stares over towards the car and instead of seeing the vehicles that's borne you up and down the mountains you just see like a twisted hunk of foreign metal and strange like it's like you can't interpret it additionally you watch as inside the cabin a snake curls up under one of the seats uh, would you like to try and push the roll or would you like to try and abort you have, so I I you haven't the... failed though have you nope no That's but he needed a right? hard success to get the if, if I push the roll and get a success but not a hard success, does that get me the negative consequence of the push roll? You still no, because you've still succeeded. No. You just won't. Right. You still haven't made progress. But in that yeah. case, yes, I will push it. Okay, go oh for God. it. Go ahead and That's roll once more. He's rolling with it, man. He's got this. This is what he does. Ooh, it oh, wanted geez. to be a fumble. <laughs> that was not a ninety-eight. That was a fifty-eight. Uh, it looks like when I get this, you can't spend success. So yeah, no good. You can't spend luck on this. So unfortunately, you push yourself closer and closer, trying to sort of like fight your own presence forward, but it's not happening. And eventually, you tumble backwards into your own body, um, and make for the car to join the others. The figure watches you go, but doesn't move. When you come back, I, I, I just I say ah. I see you decided not to make the trade. Yeah, probably a good call, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, we, 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 we don't want to push things too far. They've already been very helpful, so... Uh, and we've got one fine. battery for the, for the spear if we need that's it. That's right, that's right. Uh, I couldn't quite ascertain, uh, you know, he, he was trying to be very helpful, but uh, I couldn't quite get the uh, exact fixture on that body. Uh, I, I hope we can 
somehow track if there was a, a battle that happened somewhere nearby. Uh, we got some trackers in the party, don't we? I can help, yes. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I thought. You want me to have a look around this immediate area? You mean? How important well, is it that we find this body, though? Well, if 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 it's a if it's if it's from the surface, I I, I think it'll help. It'll tell us, you know, what they've been doing down here, what, what kind of provisions they had, what, where they came from. For all we know, this body could very well be Brendan Sterling, and, and I'd hate to leave him behind. Is there any way I could tell if it's Brendan Sterling from my vision or his vision, or, or is it? Oh, we saw it from their perspective, so it might be. Yeah, from their perspective, it was strange. It was it was evidence. like they were trying yeah. to perceive humans. They, they didn't look quite human. Strange, sort of like very overemphasized conical heads, and they were all different in their own way. Mutated images of yourself. Um, that being said, you don't believe any were Brandon Sterling. I think that this body could be anywhere around here so uh, i'm happy to look for it if you if you, if you make that the order but i think well, that they, there was they, a, went, they found it on a mount you know it could be it could be anywhere in the surrounding area and every second we we take and don't get me wrong i want to get it as much as you do if nothing just for that tommy gun that you mentioned that's true just just we look around look we, we know there was a, a fight and only one uh survivor came back so if there are any tracks around here of a, a single warrior we just follow those tracks, and that, that, that leads us to the body. All right, well, how about we start moving, and I'll, I'll do my best to track as we go. That's all I ask. All, all right. right. I, I somewhat agree with Jose here. I, I don't know how much we get out of this. Look, cool. I'll, 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 I'll try to see if I remember anything from my vision. Do you want to see if you remember anything from yours? Uh, uh, that, that. Why don't we get on the road and uh, tracking along the way? You know, I don't think it'll slow us down much. We may as well, you know, focus on speed. And, and if we if we find something along the way, then then we can. I tell you what, you know, if we find that the enemy the the uh, Fontanelli's tracks, we can follow them and be more accurate about our trajectory. That'd be fine. Now, also, I while while you've got your mind in the right place, we're going to need a boat to get across that sea. Yeah, we are. Well, well I when, when we get there, can, I bet we you get, could convert this hunk of junk into a boat. <laughs> we, we, we just assume that you can do everything. Out of metal? Well, you know, maybe. Well, Bath when we get there, we'll find, uh, the, surely we'll find the way to Martinelli. <laughs> bathtub! <laughs> all, right. all four of us in the bathtub, oh rowing along. Uh, Edie slowly eases down on the gas pedal, and as the wheels roll forward, snakes part, and any of the Kinyani inside the uh, encampment watch you leave. You circle round from the south, giving a wide berth to any of the tents, and then begin to move forward, now moving at a faster pace than you did when you were moving in the caravan. You have your destination, and you'd previously seen a map. You know you basically just have to get through the whole damn forest, and then you'll be there, at the sea, across there somewhere is the temple. Um, as you roll forward and begin to gain pace, you're going to quickly cross the distance, within a few hours probably, of, and get towards the dripping forest. And from there, we will have to see how easy it is to navigate through. But for the time being, we'll take a quick break here, and then we'll pick up the second half of this session in about 10 minutes. So thanks everyone for joining us, and we'll whack a timer up and everything. We're just going to go grab a drink, and we'll be back shortly. Thanks. Hi! Thanks for waiting. Um, so, let's just jump back into it. Um, it. Alright, so, you nerds are in your car and you are hooning up towards the dripping forest. Uh, so how, the how can we, we're going to go for some tracking though. Yeah. So the idea, so you want to try and spot where this battle took place, right? We should also yeah. head vaguely towards the spot on the horizon that, that must... Person. Yeah, but that's, that's probably where Leopold went. That's probably... That'll probably take place in between. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I, I think. Yeah. Um, uh I have a couple of questions very quickly. First, first of all, I alert everybody that what what I really want us to shoot for inside the dripping forest is this river along here, because if we get to here, we can follow this along to the sea and still water. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm also just wondering whether we do like I, I don't know if it if it might be smarter to do a big old. We're in a car. 
So do like a big old all the way, I don't know, like up to like here and then just dart across. Where are we now? Is this actually where we are? Yep. And yep. the second thing is what, what this Those symbol Those cool here. symbols is where the encampment was. Okay, oh, cool, cool. That's cool. You right. fools, it was right in front of you though. <laughs> <laughs> so... I actually saw that, and I thought that was like a like a dragon on a map. Yeah. Where they were like, it ah, is a yeah, bit. here be dragons. <laughs> like, oh, I wonder if you can put all of these on. Sorry, yeah, you guys continue. So, yeah, do we want to, like, uh, you know, do we want to try and take a non-standard route here? Because if we go through this area, we're pretty much heading through at the thickest point of the forest and having to go through the most of it. It really depends on how much fuel we have until we can convert these batteries into, you know... Kinetic energy. Let me tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna oh, yeah. speak for Rachel, and I'm gonna say Edie is confident she's done it, and we'll just see if she's right. In well which, then. In which case, I, I, I genuinely think we might want to consider heading heading across. You know, like we 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 came from across this bridge. We 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 came along this road. We could get all the way. I suppose uh, actually looking at it, we probably couldn't get like there's mountains here and a river here. You're Might also this this map is probably not one to one accurate. Yeah. The, the the intent is good though. If they're not drawing stuff up there, it's probably because it isn't there. But well, I'll, I don't I mind getting it. close. If if the, if we happen to leave the car here, you know, at least you know if something goes wrong, it's a it's a pretty straight shoot back up to the surface. My vote would be uh, to follow the tracks directly. That way, if we run to run into him within the forest. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I like that better. better. Well, I, I do like that better. Then, then let's let's make straight between the E and the D, and uh, for go inches. for the river. Okay, it's a good thought. It's a well, good plan. Again, we, we should look for his tracks and follow him directly. That's our that's our primary. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Big old. <laughs> All right. Big old line. That was um, me drawing my blue line over over Jose's green line, just so everyone knew what whose planet was. <laughs> <laughs> and an excellent sure planet it was, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um. So, uh, can I get a track test from someone? And this is before anyone rolls. I mean, give context. This is going to be for finding the path that Fontanelli took, or possibly locating wherever this battle happened. Um, it's going to be hard. And then can I also get a navigation test, which is going to be plotting your course through the dripping forest to hit this river rather than needing to go through the whole thing. That's a standard test. Uh, you guys Edie can assist one another if you are trained. I think Evie is a navigator. At navigator. We, can, I can, we can have a roll for that. Let's see. Uh, so Edie has... 40 in navigate. Wow, yeah, she's really good. That's, that's yeah, it's better than any either right. of us. Uh is who's doing the track test then? If we can have that was that. me. Okay. Is anyone else have track that can assist him? Okay. And I have track with navigate. Alright, Jose, you make a track test and uh William, can you roll for 80? Can you roll her dice? I'll just I'll keep my see. hands out of it, then it's not my fault if it goes poorly. It's yours. Ooh. One. I'm gonna say we probably can't spend her luck. Um, but can we, we push it for? <laughs> yeah, let's let's figure out how the track roll goes, and then we'll give context to the push. How'd you go, Jose? I have gotten a regular success. Uh, I'm just trying to calculate how much luck I'd have to spend to push that towards a uh, hard success. Mm. Um, what'd you get? I'd have to use like 22 luck, which is more than half of my luck. I guess it just depends on whether you're a team player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't throw that at me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then. Sorry. Yes, well, sir. Of course. I, I, I'd be very I, happy I, to. Uh, for the record, I, I don't care either way. You can spend it, you can not spend it. I, I think this is if you're a band of band player. <laughs> Yeah, Which is I the said. team, to be clear. Team player. Yeah. <laughs> We're sure. the band team. Have you not been paying attention? That's a hard success, David. All right, James. Well done. <laughs> um, okay. Did you, wait, did you, what, did you Let's, push or did you He used luck. He used luck. I, I spent, uh, what, about, about 20, 23 points of luck? Which is about like 60% of your luck. All right. You pull. Now There's I'm going to make it not remotely worth it for you. Um, no. So uh, let's park on Edie's navigation test. She's still working her way through the map and um 
uh, Jose's taken over driving because he's got a general intent of where he wants to go. And we can come back to that after this is resolved. So you're able to see, um, eventually you see like a passage, uh, heavy markings of tracks where it looks like a group of these riders rode out from. You follow it for a little ways and it's hard to map. They don't really camp frequently, they don't take breaks. So what you do typically, which is look for, you know, fire pits or similar, isn't there. And these guys patrol relentlessly. It's hard to see what's several weeks old and what might be as old as only a day or two. Eventually though, you're able to pick up a path and you follow it through towards a area much like any other. It's a large flat expanse, but it is marred slightly because in the center, in a pool of black and icy looking blood is a corpse. The figure's head is broken open and it looks like a spear has been plunged through it violently. And where it's cracked, you can see crystallizing blood is sort of like grown out of it a little bit as if as it froze, it moved up slightly into the air. The ears on the person are like pushed back towards their face and their cheekbones have jutted out almost to points breaking through the skin. As you look closely at this person, you recognize it, um, uh, Daniel, sorry, Nick, from your vision as one of the people that were ridden down by the warriors. Except now you're beginning to think that this wasn't just the warriors' impression of these people. They've been visibly and tangibly changed. They've been mutated. They are no longer purely human. Whatever they've touched, whatever they've messed with has altered them significantly. Um, you're able to get dismount and get closer. You can see signs of like spent casings scattered around. Um, there is the body strewn. There is also underneath it in this pool of crystallizing ice blood, uh, a shotgun, which is half submerged in this crystal and limited use, but you could try and salvage it. Um, apart from that though, not much else. Actually, I will say one more thing. From the tracks, you have a general direction for where Fontanelli has probably gone and you might be able to pick up the trail again. Ooh. Can we flip it over and have a look at the face? Uh, yeah. You um, get towards the edge and you tenderly sort of kick at it a bit with your boots and, and nudge it yeah, until it falls cane. over. With your cane, sorry. Yeah. Loaded, I presume. Um, eventually it gives way <laughs> and as it flips over where the uh, basically the spear went through the face and then the blood frozen had caked towards the skin there's a tearing sound and a good chunk of the face comes off left on the ground oh. in the ice and what you're looking at is um, like the skeletal form before it mixes back with skin of a person uh, could you give me a Possibly straight intelligence test, I think, maybe to try and identify them. Sure. In terms of equipment that we can find around, anything like that, David? Yeah, there's um, a satchel with some food in it, although it is rotten, and there are maggots worming their way through some of the meat. There are scrunched up pieces of paper, but they're unmarked, and he doesn't appear to have been taking any notes. Uh, yeah. There is a wallet pushed into the back pocket of his trousers and as you fumble it open there's a good $30 in there uh, and then there's also the shotgun which can be loaded uh, it's a double barrel and there's a couple of like six shells in the pocket as well there's no ID in the bullet um, yeah as you flip it open and begin to go through it there's a membership to like a Trader Joe's or something uh, you flip past a couple of bowling gift cards and then you happen upon a New York State driver's license for one, Hugo Northridge. That's one of the people. That's Let's one of the, the Check the what is that na yeah. names? That's a name. That's, that's a, a name. Get out. Oh, <laughs> oh, we got him. <laughs> that's uh, Lendello. Oh my god. Um, the I, face. I, I don't have my now, notebook on. I, I don't have the notebook that I, I, I put it. Give me a sec. Uh, the face the on the ID card now held up to the form before you does match. This is the same person, but they are visibly adjusted. Mm. Uh, so... Is Weird Web saying horribly malformed? 
They've got thirty dollars. He's got thirty dollars in his wallet. Yeah, I think he's well to do. Does that put him in the realm of a credit rating chest to see what I know about this guy? Oh yeah, you're right. I, I we, we probably meant thirty dollars our time. Checking. I meant to just say like it's it's. I it's don't a change. have. I don't um, have my notebook. Uh, it's 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 in there, and I'd have to put it to hand. But I called every individual member oh, on this list yeah. and found out who they were and found out about them and asked who they were. You did. Um, yeah. Um, you spoke to this gentleman's wife. Um, who right. told you that he was going somewhere else to look for work. I should not have said $30. Uh, it should have been quite low. This man was not wealthy. What okay. Was. He does still have the Trader Joe's gift card, though. You can... Or membership card. Oh, I pocket that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's as good as gold. That's just, as good as money. <laughs> Times are tight. All right, well... Yeah, he probably has like a dollar folded up several times and a, and a fistful of coins in the, in the edge. Well, you know, listen, I, I was hoping that Brandon Sterling might be, you know, part of, like, you know, not be at risk. You know, Fontanelli would be traveling with goons or something like that. But it looks like that the people on this list are, are, are alongside him and are at risk, which means that if we if we directly follow, uh, Brandon Sterling will probably come up because and that, that's also dangerous because... It probably means that Sterling is a already changed like this this man and and, and be in danger. Uh, so we should we should hurry. Um, there's not a pack of cigarettes on the body, is there? Okay. Worth a shot. Um. Yeah. Actually, make a luck test. <laughs> Good one. Go anyway, on, you as might, well. You might get it. Yeah. All right. Um, with this, you do have a general direction. Um, yep. Yeah, unfortunately not, Jim. Uh, you can push Edie's navigation roll. You can do it now using Jose's track because you're going to be following it. But from what you can see, he appears to be heading into the deepest portion of the dripping forest, bypassing the river completely and heading towards the sea. So if you fail this, you're going through the deep way. Can I provide a dice of advantage for this test? No, no, this is you rolling. This is you rolling. The you're making a track test. I'm making the test? Okay. Yeah, you're doing will, it with your track. Will Edie be making, give, providing me? Oh, okay. Um, it's, it's a standard right. roll, but it's pushed, so... so well, you're pushing it for Edie. Yeah. Okay. Well, before I start, uh, Van de Van, as, as a team player, can I have another cigarette? Uh, I thought you were trying to quit. <laughs> It's good for the lungs. Yeah, why, why would he try to quit? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> There's no point. We, we all, statistically, we all suck. Yeah. Uh, gotta keep There's those. There's nothing better than that, than those sticks. Mm. William go flashes ahead. back to seeing some information given to him by, like, a surgeon general about something that only yeah. the wealthy were learning. Yeah. And, yeah. Man, and man's ahead remember. of the time. He's got the computer, and he's also got, like, you know... The Cancer! <laughs> Yeah, the surgeon general told me that. I was like, oh, no, it's nonsense. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep the those lung fluids flowing. That's that's good. Yeah. good for you. <laughs> the coughing uh, is healthy. Cigarette in hand, I will make this track test. Uh, also, uh, I, I, we should give the shotgun to um, Edie to replace. Does it uh, does it work? Um, well, she it, that's well within Edie's warehouse wheelhouse rather to repair. So yeah, what gauge is it? Because I have a ton of, uh, I think twenty gauge ammo. It's it's Great. the same. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, the same fantastic. gauge for. Oh, I tell you what, if you roll same. a luck check, we might be the same gauge. Uh, it's, it's the and same Edie, gauge. It's the same gauge. Edie has a gun now, and Rachel never needs to know. <laughs> She'd be like, "Wasn't this a rifle? I remember being a rifle." <laughs> no, but she also has a. No, Where'd that spear a, come from? A shotgun and a spear. Like, that's a trade-off. <laughs> All right. Um, I, Make it I'm, clear. Edie gets the spear. The spear. I, I'm the only spear other queen. The spear, I think. I'm also relatively. Oh, you are you pretty good at hand to hand? I'm pretty good at hand to hand, and I'm really good at throwing stuff. Oh, spears are good for both. Ooh. All right. Um, I'm gonna make this track roll. Okay. Oof. Nah. All right. It wanted to be. It wanted mean? to be. No. It wanted to be a. Uh, a hard, a hard success? No. Big fail. Alright, instead of heading towards the river, you arc up further to the north and follow what you believe is their trail. As you get towards oh, yeah. the trees, they are this strange texture. 
consistency they it's as if they're soaked with water everything's kind of spongy and porous and you can see large holes that are drilled into the center of all of them and things shifting slightly behind them in the dark the beams of the car glance over everything and you can see heavy wide leaves which capture dew and rain and funnel the water down into the undergrowth where things move occasionally large glistening shapes serpentine for the most part from the inside of the car though you're kind of safe at least for now you begin to drive going around some of the larger trees but eventually you get to a part where they're beginning to get too close now you can head further around but you're going to risk getting lost more and more so and from out here given compasses don't work you have a chance of going in circles here for days you can try and go round, relying on a navigation test or someone can get out with something big and choppy and start chopping down trees do we have anything big and choppy we have a spear (laughs) that's probably a bit limited trees um as you've pulled up alongside one of them you roll down the window tentatively and you sort of can drag a nail over the edge of it and parts of the tree just sort of sloughs away like it's uh, they're like mushrooms kind of gross yeah kind of fungal waterlogged yeah. look a spear would do it like you basically just need to bash it more than more than uh, well you, you I don't want to get out of the car you can go ahead and do it uh um, it was feeling hardy. <laughs> not especially. <laughs> uh, it's not really my area of expertise either. Um, I'm torn between my utter loyalty to uh, yeah. Bandit Man yeah. and attempt and desire to help, and uh, my uh, crippling botanophobia, <laughs> and not wanting to get anywhere near. Yeah. I mean, this is, like, worst case for you. Um, currently, you're not going to need to make a sanity test. You're inside the car, the lights are on, and you're safe. But if you want to get out of the car and aid in a significant way, you'd need to succeed a power test, and then we are going to look at sanity rolls. All right, I'll, Just I'll, look, I'll get out and start bashing at the, at the, at the, at the jungle. Okay. I, I don't know what check I'm going to make. Um, I reckon either survival... Or just straight strength. Uh, yeah, I'm terrible at both those, but strength I have more in. So okay. Let's, let's try um, Nick hops out of the car, jams his rifle into its holster, but makes sure it's close at hand, and then picking up a large stick he finds on the ground, or I guess using the spear if you've got it, he begins to just hack away, carving it into the trees and then prying off large chunks. You're moving into undergrowth and you're surrounded by these foreign plants that tickle at the side of your shirt and sort of get caught, little barbs and things that grab at your clothing as you try and drive away the trees. Uh, Go ahead and make a straight strength test. Straight strength. My strength is 40. I rolled a 34. Hey, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, Um, It is okay. (laughs) It's it's a success is what it is. Um, You jam the spear into one of the trees and it plunges out the other side. With the wedge in place, you're able to heave on it. And as you put your full weight behind it, there's a crunching sound that's then met with something like squishing. And then the whole tree caves down, hitting the ground. You could feel moisture trickling around the bottom of your boots. As you take a few steps back, You see where the indent of your foot was. There are tiny worms, except they're actually micro snakes, scales and all, wiggling in the mud beneath you and gasping up at the air around. You take a few more steps back and then you jump onto the side of the car, holding on from the outside as Edie rolls it forward up over one of the trees, down and continues along. It's going to take you a while to get through here, and it's difficult to keep track of the way you've gone. Edie frequently needs to circumvent around one area, double back, and after a while, you haven't seen the sky, even though it's sunless, it'd be a nice sight, um, for quite some time. I do need a navigation test. We'll probably go to Edie, because that is their strong suit, but while they're taking control of the... um, uh, the map and trying to get uh, 
like, you know, your bearings, someone else is going to need to drive for a little while. Um, and this is then like she's plotting it. So do you want her to, do you want to auto succeed the drive test or auto succeed the navigation test? Uh, navigate, right? Yeah. I, I don't so you have to either make a drive or a navigate test. I can't. I I'd rather make, try the navigate test from the back. I I don't know how to navigate, but I don't want to sit in the front and drive because we don't have a windscreen. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Every time it's bumping into things, plants are flapping down in front of Edie, and sort of moisture is getting wicked away. She's drenched from just this sap or syrup or whatever it is, and so is whoever else is in the passenger seat. I did forget about I'll, that. I'll, I'll I'm try. on the outside. I think I'll try and drive. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll. Yep, all, all right, right, let's do it. Jose yeah. scrambles forward as Edie hops into the passenger's seat and does her best to sort of push away the things directly in front of you. But as soon as you begin to edge forward, plants are slapping you in the face and you're surrounded by this foreign alien plant matter. Can you give me a power test just to get, just to get going? All right, my bold talent gives me advantage on all power tests. Hey, you're pretty good at it. I imagine I'm still holding on to the outside and like occasionally I'm jumping off Hopping like off to like pry stuff things down exactly. and stuff out of the way. Like I'm, I'm... Exactly. Yeah, uh, so that's 40. That's a success. Okay. You steal yourself and you kind of fight back the shivers that you feel occasionally. Bits brush against your face and stuff and occasionally you have to spit up liquid that's drained down and begun to sort of leak into your lips but you're keeping control and you're now behind the wheel you shift it into a lower gear and begin to low uh descend down a small hill can you give me a drive auto test edie's pretty sure she's got the way you're just gonna need to follow it I'm not a good driver, but that's luckable. I'm going to give you the remainder of my luck, barring a oh. couple of clutch points, and I'm going to succeed that. Incredible. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. Uh, Jose, despite his fears and despite everything else, is able to follow Edie's directions, and you keep the approximate... You're going the right way. You're pretty sure of it. Eventually, you begin to get whiffs of, like, fizzing... Or something acrid, as if it's been burns, that filters through the forest and meets you. You also spot some other things. Some hostile plants that were you not in a vehicle, <laughs> you would have to deal with. But for the most part, they squeal a little bit as they crunch under the tires and oh are God. bypassed completely. The one I thing do that... a little bit of oh, over, reverse, back over, <laughs> or grind the thing a bit and then head on. For what it's worth, they whistle a little bit to you first. The sort of piping tune from some of these low, bulbous, like, flowers. And rather than attempting to respond or seeing what they require, you just flatten them several times I, I, and continue going. I'm driving my gun on the steering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, there's the, the flash of gunpowder and petals get scattered Botanophobia. across the... Uh, is, is, a, is a terrible, terrible thing. <laughs> All right, you're making good progress through the forest, but you are going to need to spend one night in there before you come out the other side. Or, Ooh, Jose, you could just keep going. I'm, we're going to keep going. I'll make a constitution test to stay awake if necessary, but we're going to keep going. If everyone else is... Yeah, I guess, I mean, you're driving. Oh, well, if you're happy to drive, uh, I suppose we can try to get some, shall I? Okay. Um, actually, can everyone make a constitution test? Just to yeah. get comfy cosy. Uh, you can all take a bonus die. This isn't that hard. Um, so go ahead and roll with a bonus die and just see if you if, if you become all tuckered out. And uh, then one for you as well, Jose. Uh, it's going to be hard for you because you're... Actually, nah, it's fine. Ooh, you are. Why do I have to roll so well on one. this test? Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, Jose, you are invigorated also, somehow. I have another bonus die. Yeah, no, I saw another pole talent. I know, you're a monster. Yeah, you're invigorated. You've smashed so many plants recently. What a day. And now you get to spend all night doing it as well. The sun never sets here, and nor does your smashing. Um, yeah, Jose continues to, to head forward. Uh, That's Nick. A crit. No, I'm, I'm going all night. Yeah. We're, we're going. No sort I got of a mate. double O seven, but that's only a hard success for me because I forgot. Oh, so you that are twenty five in constitution. Poor sickly I Nick. It's because you're not smoking enough. So uh, Nick is also okay. Uh, William, how'd you go? 
Nope, that was a fail. A fail? Um, I, I, I suddenly realised how much I miss my Egyptian cotton sheets. <laughs> yeah, you just Did spend you most of the night... All because of oh. the one constitution you lost from jumping in the... No, it was 22 off. I was thinking that'd be... I do thinking. like the idea of... I do like the image of Van Der sleeping in the backseat curled into a little ball. <laughs> like... Uh, Van de Ven, you, um, I don't know if, uh, they don't let you do it anymore, but when I was younger, uh, when you were flying on planes, if you were small enough, you'd be allowed to sleep, like, at the feet of everyone, sprawled out, it's the only way you could fully lie out. Right, so with yeah. everyone else's feet sort of tucked up, Van der Ven hits the floor and stretches <laughs> out a little bit and begins to fall asleep. You're doing pretty well and you're beginning to head off to La La Land when, in your dream, you feel something slithering up the leg of your trousers and then you start awake realizing this is here this is now and a snake is inside the car and currently curled up alongside your leg sleeping for the moment what's what do you do what's instinct what's the first thought actual, is this an actual snake snake or one yeah, of the snake no it's a, it is it is an actual snake stay very very still and say, ah, did anyone know we had a stowaway? Jose's the only other one awake from the front. Uh, I've got uh, I've three cigarettes deep, there's smoke around me. <laughs> what? What's going on? I to turn back as I the, the swerve to the right to nail a flower. <laughs> You've got your oh, gun uh, in one hand as well. <laughs> I, I just got a, a little scaly little funny down here asleep on top of me. Uh, I'm right. hoping I'm not going to wake him up. Uh, I'm going to not stop the car suddenly because I'm worried that will wake the snake up. The vibrations I know are soothing. So I'm going to carefully put my gun away and I shake awake the others to get them to try and deal with the situation. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm awake for the record. I'm, I'm just outside the car. Oh yeah, that's right. For the time being, you're working, but you are. Yeah, I think you're. So, but you're probably taking it in shifts now with Nora and wow. Edie and everyone else to beat back the the wildlife. Um. So yeah, Nick, you are alerted to the situation. Well, uh, yeah. Sounds uh. Good luck with that. <laughs> Jump out and start clearing more of the tree. Like I just. Like, I lean in through the way, yeah, good luck with that. And I just jump out and start hacking at, like, the forest to clear Nick, a path he, 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 needs, he needs help, and I can't help. I'm driving. No, no, that's all right. I'll just scoot Is him it, off it, here. It, they seem pretty harmless. Just leave him. He'll leave you. You'll be fine. Do I recognize that this is one from the camp? Uh, impossible to tell. You actually, I mean, you remember when you were perceiving through the eyes oh, of the me. masked saw warrior, that. you saw, oh, yeah, you actually saw nice. a snake inside the cabin. It looks like, yes, this has traveled with you from the encampment. And it's asleep? It seems to be. Well, I think this one came with us from the camp. What if our new friend sent it to, you know, keep an eye on us? Um, uh, we can leave it on you if, if, if you're comfortable with that, sir. I leave this decision entirely in your hands. Well, I, I, I seem to remember, you know, the, the, the masked warrior we were talking to. He, I, th I, I think he sent it. I think he sent it with us. All right, well... I think we got to do a little, uh, little, uh, scaly little buddy down here. Okay, if, if you're sure, sir. We could you, put you... him in the boot if you wanted to. Sorry, not the boot. What are the Americans The what? The trunk. trunk. You mean the trunk? The animal? Coming. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Coming? animal. See a lot of red. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll just do my best to get some rest. I get no rest. Yeah. All right. So I think everyone else takes turns, but uh, William stays away from most of the night, kind of uh, making sure he doesn't roll over onto the snake to either aggravate it or, I guess, disappoint it or make it... Sad. You're, you're trying to be nice yeah. to it at the moment. Or and avenge the, the warriors. Exactly. Eventually it does untether itself from you and recedes once more under the seats. And you're just aware whenever you put your fit, your shoes down that that thing is just behind you. If it wanted to, it's, it could strike at your ankles at any moment. It's just looking for somewhere warm. <laughs> That's what they need. They're cold-blooded. They just wanted a warm place to sleep. A little place to like, snuggle. Yeah. I was, I was actually thinking about some of the science of this, and of course I don't know anything about science, but I was wondering if, if there's something about this being a dripping forest because the, nothing can evaporate and sort of 
condenses and drips back. I don't know. Anyway, um, sweet, sweet keeper. <laughs> Anyways, you just smash over a couple more yeah. plants. Dear and you're keeper. just musing. Uh, I, I know that um, a critical on a constitution test doesn't really do anything in this situation. But considering I'm so invigorated, can I still have the healing bonus for resting? Yes. Yes, you may. Yes. So everyone can restore two, with the exception of William, who can restore four. Oh, I can restore two? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You, okay. You're just you're just, you're just, just knackered. No, you, you succeeded. You got a hard success, Nick. Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, 66% of my health. Hey, I'll get you yet, you bastard. All right. Wait, am I getting the bonus? Because I didn't sleep. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you still heal. Oh, you yeah. just you you're just gonna be tired. So certain tests are gonna be with disadvantage, mainly like physical stuff. If you can get a bit of um, shut eye at some point, you'll be okay. So who has the spear at this point? Edie, uh, I guess. Yeah, but I think it's kind of oh yeah, that's right. Trees and stuff. Uh, well, I guess uh, now that I'm fully healed, um, I would like to pass the disc. To a Nick and say, hey, uh, you know, maybe this thing powers it up a bit. Maybe it'll uh, give you an easier time in getting this uh, jungle out of the way here. I, I think it probably has something to do with the ice and frost that we saw on that body. How do you figure? Well, I mean, it's not freezing here. Look, something. Uh, either way, I think batteries run out, right? So let's yeah, be. But... Let's not. Let's not use it now when we don't need it. But, but these things it. can power a whole house. I don't think it takes much out of it to just, you know, do whatever it does. I don't know. What does it do? Have we seen what the what the weapons do when they're powered up? Not, not, not for us hands. Oh, they hum. Nick's got an and, intent and, from it. Yeah. And they and they and I remember something about it, like being easy. <laughs> oh, sorry. Easy to use, like it seeks. It's mm. opponent or something. Like, well, what? I mean, might as well try it out in trees before we get to the real deal, all right? Mm. Come on. I, I think no use if, if we use it now and it, and it turns out to run out of juice, then... Uh, then, then, then we're back to where we started, you know? Let's, no, let's, no, let's we're out of battery. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but if we're not going to use the battery, then, well, then, then we get no benefit from it anyway. Let's, let's just give it a spin. Come on. Uh, look... I, I barely know how to use this thing. I, I think if anyone's going to use it, it should be Edie or uh, uh, Jose. You stick it in, you see what happens. I don't know what to tell you. Well, <laughs> hold on to it anyway. You got the spear. You should hold on to the battery just in case, you know, it, it, it okay. comes in handy. Uh, uh, Nick can pocket the battery, and he's got it just in case. So... After you've woken up, there's another hour or two of smashing through forest. Uh quite satisfying at this point um and that sort of acrid smell is growing you seem to have been making pretty good progress um eventually it the trees began to become a little bit more sparse and you can pick out between them this white ocean in the distance as if filled with like tiny crystals or powder or something um you emerge out alongside the edge of the forest and you can see it recedes down to these uh, shores of the same white sort of terrain as the plains behind you but crushed to powder reminiscent of sand built into it at one section there are a group of two or three houses ruined as are many of the areas you've been through and there are jetties jutting out from them three next to these are a series of I think they're like catamarans, dual-hulled ships with large golden sails that have been rolled up and a wind that occasionally whips across the water to shake the branches of the forest where you've emerged, dropping the water down onto the roof of the car. There are still three or four vessels there, and the other thing you note is in the distance, not far away at all, is a ship. It's going away from you, bound for a lump of rock in the distance, which you presume is the temple across the sea. You also presume that that ship is bearing Fontanelli and those that remain of his posse. You're getting so closer. Close. We 
Watch out! Grab him! Get, get on, onto the boats! Onto the boats! Give chase! Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Uh, we we might be able to, to, to catch up quickly. Why don't we leave uh, Edie and Nora here to, to unpack things? They can catch up on one of the other vessels and maybe, hell, bring the car too. We grab another one, we tear off, we try to catch them, stop the vessel, sink them, leave it, like, put an end to this right now. Let me just say, I love it. All right, uh, quick, I, let's, I, go, think let's Edie, go. I think Edie should come with us <laughs> in case we don't get back here. You said there's two boats though, right? Yeah, there's there's a few, Edie, yeah. Edie can catch up. There's a few. Uh, I, I think we get one boat each. Ah, uh, there's 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 uh, three, yeah. So yeah, one boat for the three of you if you leave none for them. Personally, but uh, right. I think we should stick together. One one craft and a backup craft should be enough. Plus we have we have supplies. We have things that we need to bring with us. We need to leave, leave at least one person here to unpack the car. And they're getting away right now. We 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 we, we should leave. Yeah, I think we should all right. Anyway, yeah. All, all right. Board. Uh, the car rolls down the embankment, the wheels um, burning through the, the sand, and you rocket towards the shore and the jetties, which plunge out into the water. Uh, the car uh, sort of swings around to a halt, and before it's completely finished moving, the doors explode open, and Nick, William, and Jose land, feet in the sand, and begin to tear over towards the jetty. As you run across it, you can see that the wood here is dry, but it's the same planks as, you know, made from the trees behind you. And on either side are these sleek, golden catamaran craft with the sails still suspended. You're not really sure how these have managed to stand the test of time so well, but you can see the odd piece of wear and tear. Perhaps they're just made so exceptionally well. Um, the three of you leap onto one of them and are going to begin to untether it, lower the sails, and attempt to catch the wind. So I need a... Uh, Pilot boat test. Does anyone have a pilot? Right. Hey? I, I think the chance of you getting one is very low. Okay. Excuse me? University Sailing Club? Is it sailing really? specifically? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Mr. Vanderman, I knew it! I knew it! This pilot boat oh, oh, sailing? 62! <laughs> There's so many points! My diamonds go! All right. Oh my god! <laughs> Alright! Uh, mates, keep the main sail and uh, uh, head into the wind. <laughs> uh, Vanderven casts off his oh, the jacket. And do you have a? You can find it always. <laughs> do you have a little cap with a golden <laughs> anchor on it that you can <laughs> pull down <laughs> yes. over your brow as you begin to shout commands and your two sailors cast off the lines, lower the sails, and you begin to roll away. Uh, go ahead and make a. I didn't give it a proper roll. I just press R. If that if that was an intended roll, that's pretty flipping good. That's that's a zero two. Okay. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's a success three, right? That's borderline a crit. Well, okay. I was like, we're never gonna catch up. Van der Van pops for an extreme success. At the Van der Van, oh, as it turns out, this. is really really good at sailing. He has medals at home. It's possibly one of the few skills at college that you genuinely picked up, and it wasn't just bribery that got you through the classes. Yeah, you take off immediately. The, the wind fills the sails and, and Van de Ven is tightening things and loosing stuff off and managing to helm the vessel by himself as he yells orders to Jose and Nick. And if you don't understand exactly what he's telling you to do, you get the intent and you do it quickly. After I a little bit, really you realize with your heart in your lungs, or your heart in your lungs, your heart in your throat, that you are closing the distance. Before you, on another one of these vessels, Fontanelli is at the wheel and four more um, men are working on the ropes around him, except they're not nearly as effective at this. Fontanelli is visibly barking orders at them, but they're stumbling with things. They never really learnt to sail and they're kind of buggering it up. One of them's just gotten an oar and is pushing forward, attempting to just carry the whole ship with uh, raw might alone. Fontanelli, as you close, looks around behind you and William, who's procured a telescope lens from somewhere, <laughs> Eyeballs out towards him, and you see his face, watery flesh beneath rippling skin that stares at you. The dark eyes glimmer with hate and anger, and then he swings back around, barking orders once more, except now things begin to change. Fontanelli lets go of the wheel and actually begins to rise up, hovering just behind it. And then he draws his hands out and claps them closed, pointing towards him at the mast. A massive ripple of force and power is shoved forth 
from Fontanelli directed into the mast and you see splinters of golden shrapnel cast through the uh, sail shredding it to pieces but the raw impact of the blow causes the boat to dive sort of forward into the water a wave of this caustic ocean floods over it but it moves forward as if just heaved in the right direction Fontanelli moves with it and repeats the process regardless you are still gaining on them when the island is in sight and you can see a small hamlet built under a rock with a temple at the highest point you are beginning to come alongside their vessel you have a few moments to shout orders uh william i think you're in control of the situation oh oh dear uh, I'd like to throw the spear and battery to uh, um, Jose. Okay. Just in case he needs them. He's, he's going to be a lot better with those than I am. Jose catches I, one I, in each hand. I hard commit. I straight away put it in. All right, yeah. Uh, you catch one and with a rope wrapped around your other hand so that you can lean out over the catamaran, pulling one of the hulls out of the water to get a little bit of extra speed. You slot the battery in and it hums into life. The haft, which was still wood, visibly extends and the blade at its length begins to vibrate, um, lengthening itself as well. And you find the weight of it perfect, as if it's matching your, mirror, uh, your movements and accentuating them. It's quite elegant, this weapon. Uh, you have a bonus die for any melee fighting tests you make, and it deals a d8 plus 2 damage. Oh my god. I, I, I think we can do this. Uh, William, you have command of the vessel. What's the plan? Do you want to bring it alongside, or do you want to wait until they get to shore and lay siege to them there? Uh, bring it alongside. Let's do along, this. Bring it alongside. All right. As you begin uh, to bring it alongside, Fontanelli raises his hands up again, gives another heave towards it. The mast splinters again, and now is actually beginning to break. You can see it moving at an odd angle. Two of the men at the front are continuing to man the ropes, but the other two drop them, letting them flap in the wind violently. And they reach behind them and pull out Tommy guns, slapping in round barrel magazines, loading the levers and pointing them at you as a burst of bullets lance across the bow and send up splashes of water uh, against you. We're going to go into dexterity order, and I'm just going to give us a quick sneaky map. I didn't expect Excellent. a pirate campaign. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 if someone, someone doesn't say he's got to be the worst pirate I've ever heard of during this <laughs> encounter, <laughs> it'll be very irritating. All right, so the cat has two holes a piece, and we'll put theirs at a slight angle as you manage to cut them off. Actually, we'll put you in the right-hand one. It looks like you're, this... you're veering towards them. Oh, so we're in the same kind of vessel, or are they... Yeah. Like, you are in the same kind of vessel, good. yeah. How many Each people one... aboard? Uh, theirs has uh, Fontanelli and four others. Oof. And they have guns. In terms of people. Although yep. I suspect a lot of the people up top were theirs as well. Alright. Um, so, just for simple, uh, then we have the mask, or the, sorry, the sail going across with the mask. Uh, let's, we have the steering thing, and then there's just some, you know, miscellaneous stuff over here when they've gathered shit. Um, so, their mast is beginning to break, but Fontanelli is just heaving forward, sending raw power into it to surge it um, again and again and again. Uh, there are the others which have raised their guns against you. So, let me just make it a couple of tokies. We can use Fontanelli uh, for a token. How's that? Can we, use it? can we recognize Brendan? Or Argus? You cannot recognize either of them. In fact, none of these gentlemen look like... Um, any of those that you previously had seen um, missing. Actually, you don't necessarily know what damn. they look like, but they may just be members of the league. We had a photo of Brandon. Oh, we know Brandon. You had a Brandon. Of, it, yeah, it's it's definitely not Brandon. Um, so yours matches theirs in general size and shape. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go to uh, a dexterity order. Oof. All right. I think it's uh, Vandervan, then Nick, then me. Oh, no, I think I'm first. No, Nick, Vandervan, then me. Sorry. Sixty. Right. We'll keep your guys loosey goosey until you need to. Um, if if they board you or vice versa, we can. Uh, am I first? All right. Then, uh, then yeah. Then. So it's always, it's a thousand times. Sorry, Nick. You're always first, right? Yep. I'm sixty five. I, I just whether William, I'm them or not. And then Jose. Whoop. Where do they slot into that? Oh, um, if you like. Uh no no so. Um, let me check quickly. Uh, what's your dex, Nick? 65. 
I don't need to write that down, actually. That's unnecessary information. Ooh. That's a, that sounds like an ooh, they're going to go first. They go first, and yeah, uh, what's his nuts? Uh, Leopold is the same as you. <laughs> so you will go first, just. So, okay. um, as they bring it around, there is a barrage of gunfire, and several shots lance across the bow, uh, splashing into the water. Can the two of you at the front... William, you're at the back taking control of the heart. You don't need to. Can the two of you at the front both make... Uh, dodge tests uh, you can take a bonus die so this is like they're, they're a long way away I won't roll for them we'll do it once we get closer this is like as you approach um, William we are going to presume you have control of the vessel until you release the I helm or whatever you. you can bring it where you want for the time being alright uh, uh, success from me alright both of you are good uh, Nick how'd you go uh, yeah I saw this alright yeah you're oh good my God. Um, the bullet slides across and you don't even blink at it as you continue surging closer now, Fontanelli is still casting things, and as he rises up, you can see his eyes are rolling back, and there's, like, the wind whipping through his robe, sending the ripples through his uh, flesh as if it was water as well. As he ascends higher, you can see his mouth opens, and there's no teeth inside. And rather than using a tongue to undulate syllables and, and, and words, there's instead just, like, a vacuuming voice that booms out, propelled by just anger or something awful. He screams that the black sun rises and now you will behold a new age as he claps his hands once more and sends the boat propelling forward. For the time being, he is focusing on outpacing you towards the island, which he does not seem to be capable of doing. He is in the throes of madness and utterly intent on his task. Uh, that is all he is going to do until anyone makes him change his damn mind. Nick, you're up. Just for context, um, this is quite a ways away. This is like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's, this is all measured in yards, right? 20 I reckon it's yards? Like, 20 yeah, years? 20 yards for the time being. We'll put William with the capacity to close or, or, or increase that distance. So what's my what's my range then? Uh, is it on your sheet? Oh, yeah, there we are. I gotcha. All right, my range is 15 yards. Okay, so uh, you'll have a penalty die if you shoot at them from here. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay. You fire at one of the goons. And as I as I'm firing, I'm yelling at um at Van de Van to get us closer. Okay. <laughs> yep. I can't hit it from here. You can uh, take your turn to aim as well. Remember, Nick, if you'd like. Yeah. But let's let's get some more. I presume down. you're fanning right. the hammer as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I want to shoot one of the ones with the Tommy gun. All right. Just you. Uh, yeah, so they will say these two here are uh, the active ones. These two are on the ropes. Okay. Um, you just wrap one of your feet through the uh, rope beneath you to give yourself some stability, and you lean against one of the edges. As you... uh, go ahead and make three shots. Right. Making the first shot. Uh, the lowest of those is 32, so that's a success. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Did you roll with the that. penalty die? You're just rolling straight rolls, right? Yep, yep, rolling. I roll with, with one penalty dice. And you have a bonus die. Oh, no. Yes, uh, no. Yeah. Just you, one you're on penalty it. dice. You're on it. You're on it. Yeah. Um, I rolled nine damage on that one. Got it. Nice. Um, second Still shot. standing, half health. Uh, that one, I'm not so lucky. That's a miss. And third and final shot. Uh... Uh, I can't luck down in combat, can I? Yes, you can. Yep, okay. you can luck, you can't push. Uh, i tell you what, I want to take out one of these Tommy guns. Alright. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to luck that down 11 points. Um, and, and succeed. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. 36 luck. I'm going to roll my damage on that one. one damage for... 6 damage. Damn. Oh, just off. So... Total of 15, he has three health remaining. Two great gouts of blood have splashed down from him. And where the wounds are left, you can see gaping black holes where the blood now begins to crystallize, forming sort of like a crust along it. And where it's splattered along the deck, it burns through ropes. Clearly, whatever changes they've gone through have made their blood dangerous to those that are nearby. Raise up Ooh. his Tommy gun and gets an eyeball on you. Uh, he's going to shoot you if he can. All right, 
Uh, William, you're up. Uh, bring it, bring us in closer. Okay. Um, I don't have the speed of one of these things, but I'd say you can easily do 10 yards. Do you want to just halve the distance? Sounds good. All right. Let's go down to 10. Note that you are bringing it closer before their round, not yours. Ooh. Is there a way I can change the timing? The, I tell you what, if you give, if you make a roll, if you can succeed on a test, we'll say that instead you can do it just before Nick's turn. You can bring it nice. up. Just, uh, like like they do a round and then you swing it exactly. closer, you, you know? Timing it out. Sick ass. Here right. it comes. Uh, 58, regular success. Wow, you're really good at sailing. <laughs> 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 it's never come up. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm totally sure. I'm, the only reason I took it is because our club met on a boat. <laughs> and you and think I thought we could ah, like, pilot suitable. back through the, through the Hudson River or something. So I was like, oh, that'd be cool. All right, uh, sweet. So, um, so, so yeah. what? It's coming up. It's pretty useful. <laughs> so for the time being, you're keeping the 20 yards. You're actually moving out in front of their bow now. But as it's going to bring back around to your turn, you can snap the uh, sails in position and surge towards them. So, Jose, it's your turn. You're still at 20 yards for the time being. Okay. Um, I can't grab a rope and swing across uh, boarding style, can I? Probably pushing it here. You can definitely still roll, right. but it will be hella it. hard. It'll probably be okay. an extreme jump test. All right, in which case I won't try and risk that. Instead, I'm going to just make a... Uh, I'm just going to crack off a shot with my pistol as well. Go for yeah, it. So you have, a, you have a die. Uh, penalty die? Yep. You have the same pistol as... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, both of those are successes. Okay. Uh, I presume you're hitting the same one, right? Yep. So I deal uh, to them... Six damage. Yeah, okay, that's enough. Uh, the goon, as he's Ooh. raising the gun up, is shot again, and his finger squeezes down the trigger, and it, it fires as he collapses to the deck, bullets lancing up into the air, uh, and one of the ones working the ropes begins to scramble forward to get to the gun. Uh, all right, that's your turn, so we're going to go back to the top. Acting first is the two remaining guards. One of them... Darts forward and picks up the gun. That's all he's going to do. And this one's going to continue keeping some control of the vessel. The other one, however, with the 20-yard gap, begins to fire. Uh, he's going to shoot at Nick. Yeah. So, Nick, you can choose to dive to cover if you want. I will absolutely do that. You remember or, you miss your next turn if you do so. Oh, yep. shoot. Or um, you can just... They have the same penalties you've been having. Yeah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hope he doesn't hit me. I might take some damage here, boys. But I'm on... My I'm one off four, which for me. Right, and I'll roll with a penalty die. Points. So yeah. this is well and truly enough to kill me. Oof, yeah, uh, I succeed. Uh, so you take Ooh, Thompson's are big guns, man. Yeah. You they take are. a D ten plus two damage. Yeah. Alright, this could kill you. There is one dice, there is one roll. The silence is deafening. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my sound yeah, cut out. Yourself. My sound cut out, and I was panicking. Uh, I rolled a nine, <laughs> so you take eleven points of damage oh, as That's bullet. A... Um, you get hit oh, several God. times, and as you look down, you can see blood soaking through your shirt. Uh, you are in bad shape, but you are still standing. How much health do you have? Just one. One. Yep. There we go. Oh boy. Yep. Boy, boy. This boy. is not okay. looking good. The good, good news is, the good news is that was, I still have that one. Yeah, alright. Uh, he's finished his shot, the others have gotten in position, and Fontanelli is going to take his turn. So, from the highest point. Oh, you're not really in range yet. Okay. Isn't it disappointedly? Let me have my fun. <laughs> Uh, Alright, uh, he's going oh, to continue I'm sorry, was 11 damage and putting me on one health Not enough fun for you It's fine, whatever, it didn't kill you um, uh, Leopold Fontanelli right. Is going to continue to keep control of the ship And he's not going to do anything else for the time being He begins channeling yet another spell Into a burst of energy, but he's holding it For the time being, completing the ritual uh, Nick, we are at the top And as your turn begins uh, William Rolls the wheel, the whole thing swings over, the mast claps with wind, and you surge towards them with a 10 yard uh, gap between you. Uh, go ahead really and make do. your attacks. You are badly wounded. You're like leaning against the side of it, your gun's still leveled. Um, you can go ahead and shoot, though. 
Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot the dude who shot me. Okay, uh, it's this one here. Yep, go for it. Yep. Bloody bludgeon hell. Um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna spend some I'm gonna spend some luck to get that one down. Uh, All right, what are we looking at, man? Yeah, yeah, multi firing. I assume I'm multi firing. Uh, you yeah. always do because it's your 15 points of luck, which is a lot. Uh, to get a success one. Go ahead and roll your damage. damage. Uh, that is eight on the first hit. Nice. All right, second attack. There's a spray of crystal and blood. Oh my god, I've rolled so many 80s. Um, I'm gonna lock that down. I just don't know if I can. Hold on. Doing the math. We are just taking these guys out, burning resources. Uh, 13 points of. Yep. And now just don't roll a 1. Yep, alright. And damage on that. Uh, is 4 damage. Alright, so the second attack, you are up. You're getting through it. He's still standing yep. though. And then, and then third attack. Third and final shot. Alright, uh, 51, that's just a regular success. And, oh, that's 12 damage. That's full damage on that last shot. Oh, damn. Very He's nice. dead. Alright, the second one, even Good, leaning against the sun. the last thing I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one dies as well, and Nick begins to collapse as he reloads the, uh, the weapon, and William, it's your turn. I will be taking cover next round. <laughs> I'll I swing us in. Am I close enough to get a shot off while holding control of the boat? Uh, yeah, you're in control currently. It'll maintain at 10 yards unless they do something to change it. I or do note, I'm remainder. pretty sure you have a requirement to push a roll if you fail it with your shotgun. Me? Yeah. I have no memory of this. I'm pretty Thank sure. You. I have art. some. I have, I'm I pretty have sure art. Yeah, I think that's right, so. Well, you might want to get us in that last ten yards. Heck, all right, I'll do that. Uh, Wait, I'm, I'm just, I'm just worried about what. <laughs> Art just what says I do. <laughs> is doing. He's got some magic, yo. I guess even if we, we it's, it's, it's. I feel like it's too dangerous to try to apprehend him now. <laughs> I don't really want to fall on that water. See, maybe let's just try to take out the rest of his goons, and then at least we got the upper hand. I'll focus on the goons then. Fine. I don't want to. I don't want to bring us closer. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You're. I'm, I you're am the carry. I am you the can captain. still fire. You'll just need to push. Or do you get to push? Because normally you can't in combat. I'm gonna fire. Uh, I yeah, suspect you don't want to get so with disadvantage. Well, oh, yeah, also, what's range? the range of your? I, it says 10, 20, 50. So I think. Fifty yeah. is fine, right? Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. That's a big yeah. ass range. Well, that so should be the other way around. It's about how much damage it takes. Though. Yeah, I think you probably do have a penalty die given you're keeping control of the vessel the same. This is that's kind of a one-handed. But that's pretty cool. One-handed hand hand shotgun. Oh yeah. That I have to push. Okay, let's see what happens. So you, who, who are you shooting three, at? Oh, the nearest good. Okay. So so it's mid-range. So they take three d six instead of four d six. All right. Here it comes. Oh, very nice. 32. Okay. Uh, may I give wait, you two points we, of luck that, to make that a hard? Is you that may? disadvantage or advantage? That's, that's a... Oh, you wait, may, yeah, although... Yeah, you, yeah you, also, you won't need to. You'll, that'll, that'll hit. You don't need to. My brain just filters it out. That's an 82. Oh. Uh, you now have, you to, have push to push it. Push. And now I must push Or you could luck it. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just before we get it. Uh, no, you could luck it a bazillion points. Or... Both points. What you're going to do is you are going to send the boat right towards them. You just need to get a little bit closer. Essentially, ramming distance. If you can hit one boat with the other or just glance past it, you'll be able to get off the shot reliably. Go is, ahead and put. Go ahead and. the exact wording? On what? I have to push it, right? You have to push yeah. it. Yeah, well, I have to push you... it. I'm going to push it. All right. Uh, Rolly poly. I think the spirit of the of the chat. Oh, the spirit of the chat. You're right. The spirit um, of the of the chat is that you should you need to push it. Fair rather enough. Rather than liking it, I assume. Entertainer all the way. <laughs> oh. oh! 
27. That's, a success That's pretty good. Too. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you move you past that was and a it, good call. it glances across the bow of their boat, pushing it to the side slightly. And as you go right past the guy, you squeeze off a shot. Um, the shotgun roars, and you can go ahead and roll your damage. Ah, uh, hell, do it for do it for being closer, because narratively got, you definitely right were. I got yep. your request. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, not bad, nine. Nine damage, alright. That's not great. It's not nothing, that's half. Alright. Um, additionally, because you're right up in his face, as you shoot at him, uh, blood splashes out, and can you... Please make a luck test. Oh. Okay. I mean, I can, because I've got 79, so I'm not worried. I'm just mildly concerned. Uh, 81. Oh, amazing. This is great. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> you are blinded for a D4 rounds, and you oh, are in God. control of the... <laughs> Eighty-one over seventy-nine. Can you roll a D four, please? The luckiest member of the party. Oh man. Oh jeez, that's bad. That's no good. All right. Three. Three rounds blinded as the man in control of the vessel scrubs at his eyes and screams, "I'm blind! I'm blind!" And the ship roars past them off and back into the distance. Uh, okay. Fantastic. Amazing. Terrific stuff. Uh, Jose, you're up. Right. We got we got two and a half. Of uh, Jose, That's you right. are going right past him. If you want to go for the, the leap. For the swing, for the jump. The, the leap, leap over? over? Yeah. Um, just, you're just not 100% my... sure the boat's coming back for you. My charge is injured. I couldn't possibly leave. Instead, uh, uh, while we pass through at point blank range, I crack three shots off. Okay. Uh, you still have a... Yeah, you have a... Tell you what, you can be within point... Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for yeah. It. Go for it. You have bonus die because you're right next to him. You are on a and boat. Um, but, but I'm cracking off multiple shots, so they're just regular shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. first shot against the wounded goon with the tummy gun. Yep. Uh, a 58, which, oh my, uh, my God, is a hit. Okay. Okay. So that goon takes... Seven damage. Uh, all right, yep, still just standing. Okay, second shot. Uh, is an 83, so that's a solid miss. And the last one, an 81, bad luck. Okay, uh, because as you just pointed out, you are also in point blank range. Can you please make a luck test? Oh dear me. I'm blind. <laughs> Roll a d4. <laughs> Wait, I'm the only one not blind? Yeah. I'm on one health. Nick, take one the turn. wheel. All right, you're I'm blind for turn. one turn. That felt slightly mean, but I think that's what we're doing. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. Um, all right, uh, blood sprays out from this man as he's shot twice, but he's still somehow standing. He uh, tumbles backwards, and with his remaining health, which is two, he is going to fire at you as you retreat. So, um... One of the other ones will lunge forward, and actually, rather than grabbing a gun, he is going to make a leap to board your vessel as it passes. He wouldn't he dare. He absolutely would, because it's sick. Uh, so let's see if they have... Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, they're handy people. They can have a little bit of jump. They can have a little jump. It. Ooh, not high enough. <laughs> he leaps over and lands just on the... Not that guy. Uh, this one. He's not in the water, but he's on the back of one of the hulls, half submerged and holding on as the vessel slightly out of control because Van de Van is blind. Uh, and he also takes some damage because that's what the water does. Uh, let's see. Who knew? Do not fall into the water. <laughs> Good note. Oh, it's, that's, that's oh no, I that's for that's for to try that. Oof, that's for being splashed. So I reckon that is way higher for being submerged. So we'll do it. We'll do um for being splashed. You take damage. Yeah. So let's do. Do two not get splashed. Yeah. Okay. Wait, he takes six so points. He takes six points water. of damage as he screams in agony as his legs begin to melt underneath him. All right. 
Uh, this one's gonna shoot though, so uh, I guess Jose, if you're the. Me, I'm I'm diving for cover. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, having been blinded, can I immediately dive for cover? Like dive down to the floor of the boat? I'll take a penalty dice. Um, actually, hang on. It, you shot. Yeah, you shot him most frequently, so it's gonna be at you, Jose. Uh, you can make your dodge. It's gonna be with a penalty die though. Okay. All right, and he's gonna shoot at you. Uh, I will miss. Fail. I will, uh, oh my god, wait. No, yeah, I just failed. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Some yeah, that's gonna hit. So oh, uh, also, hang on, what's his dex? <laughs> Is that sarcasm? Oof. Okay, it's not a, not a crit. Um, Alright, I'm rolling my damage. A d10 plus... 2 is a total of 8 damage. As you throw yourself to the ground, but there is little cover to offer, and splintering through the wood, bullets slam into your side, and you tumble away, bloodied and injured. Okay, that's, uh, that's all of their turns. With this close, Fontanelli's going to move in towards the center, and still holding himself aloft, begin to actually surge out over the water and between the distance of the two boats. He is approaching. You can try and move away, but William's a bit compromised, or you can try something else. So he's currently, like, in between the two, floating towards you with a sort of a messiah complex. Uh, Nick, you're up. You are the only one not blinded. Uh, what would you say? Okay, cool. Jackson? I thought you said he was going to heck off. He thought about it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're in, within range and you've injured people. I think he's invested. Alright. Yeah. Alright. So. I've got one shot left in my pistol, which is the same amount of health as I have. Good. And so I think I will try to shoot this last goon with a Tommy gun and take him out. Okay. Before. Uh, yeah, before I go. All right, go ahead and make so your shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a single shot against him. Uh, uh, no penalty, no, no bonus. No, in fact, you're within, you're within blank. point blank. So again, oh, though, now, if you do now, that, there's a now. luck test, so you can back away. <laughs> do you want the point blank bonus die, uh, or would you rather oh, yeah, not I have the luck negative, test to be blinded? Um, you know what? The difference between one health of one health and blinded. Actually, no, I will back away. I will back away. Okay, all right. So you let the boat continue past. You're now outside of the point blank. So go ahead and just make a straight roll. Oh, no. Oh, no, boys. What? Did you fumble? That is a double O, double O. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. I think that's I a malfunction. My gun breaks. I oh, think, I think leaning, malfunction. leaning out over the edge, the last you'll see of the service resolver, as, as Fontanelli surges towards you, it is dropped. Into the, into the water as you're basically shunted by Fontanelli's power once more. The boat rocks, it tumbles from your grip and splashes, dissolving in the ocean and sinking oh. towards the bottom. Uh, it served me so well. Yeah, it did for a time, but all good things. Um, all right, William, it's your turn. You are blinded, but you're in control. You can hear the cackling of Fontanelli as he surges towards you saying, I have basked in terrible light and am reborn unfettered. What are you going to do? Um, can I hear the screaming of the goon behind me? Yep. Let me, let me have a go at shooting him. All right, you swing around, fire at him. I'm, I'm holding the, I'm hold the, I'll hold the boat steady. All right, you have two have penalty shot. die then? Two penalty die? Oh, put minus one because he's in point blank. Well, yeah, you're blind. I reckon don't worry about the boat anymore, man. You could just let the boat go. Boat's gonna do what it's yeah, gonna okay. do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the other boat's like abandoned as well, so that's yeah. fine. All right, you let you let you take your hand off the wheel, and the ropes begin to run back through their um, hooks and things. The sails flap, and you no longer have momentum. But neither does the other vessel. Swinging around and blinded, you aim in the right direction of screaming and fire. You have a bonus die for point blank, but you lose that for being blinded. So a straight oh. roll. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I rolled with a, an extra die, so should I just go that? Just go re ahead and re-roll. All right, here we go. Ooh, Ooh that's pretty 19. good. Dean, uh, I, I can afford seven points of luck for an extreme. Okay. Oh my god. Max damage on four d six plus four d six is twenty four and change. He is paced. 
You can roll it if you want to, otherwise you just hear a scream as the gunshot uh, fires uh, and the man is thrown from your vessel. No one boards Van Der Van's sailboat unless he wishes it. Uh, I just saw a bunch of boat dice get exploded. Uh, Alright, he is banished. Uh, Jose, what do you want to do? Um, I, um, wipe my eyes. Oh, sorry, you lost your turn, didn't you? Because you threw yourself yeah, to the ground. Yeah, I dodged. I wipe my eyes and get back to my feet. Beautiful, thank you. Yep. Uh, you are no longer blinded, and though there's, like, crystals of ice covering your eyes, you can see once more as Fontanelli surges towards you. Nick... Oh, no, sorry, we've got one goon left. Uh, alright, Nick. He's gonna shoot at you. Do you want to throw yourself to the deck, or...? I'm gonna dive for cover. Okay. So I make a dodge check? Yep, make a dodge test. Well, I'm glad I got that 100 out of my system. Did I roll? Yeah, I did. Alright. Sorry. Uh, that was a... The worst thing about that 100 was I rolled the double O first. Oh, wait, sorry. Did like, we boom. say we're outside of range of being point blank, right? You let it go a little bit further, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I let it okay. go. Okay, so. alright. I will... I, that roll does not count. Okay. Uh, how'd you go, Daniel? I failed. Alright, so did he. You throw yourself to the ground and bullets rip through the air above you, but neither of you impacting means you will not take a any damage and you'll live to fight another day that is his turn then your turn which gets passed and Fontanelli moves to board the vessel he is standing above you all now or floating above you in the cavernous like in the vacuum where the sails were flapping previously they're now still and he holds himself aloft he's wearing robes he's probably grabbed them from a Kinyani or something similar and that sort of watery complexion fills him completely and he stares down at all of you those of you that can see can you please make sanity tests this man is horrifying and to see what has happened to a human in this place sends chills down your spine oh wish that was my role for anything else <laughs> you uh, find the first guy success. All right, yeah, both of you are good. You think he looks a bit stupid up there. Oh, <laughs> kind of good thing, good thing you're okay. <laughs> yeah, because I'm indefinitely insane. If I'd taken even one point of damage, I would have started having, you know, uh, <laughs> some very interesting ideas. Um, you think we that you... We kill him from outside the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you, as you stare scare. up at him... <laughs> uh, and find your confidence, you see his cheeks fill his body convulse and bile blood from his system pulled into his lungs and then propelled up through his mouth takes the form of searing black vomit that he convulses down and sends towards mm, jose all right uh, Jose, do you want? You are probably not within range to thump him, especially because he's suspended above you. So you can choose to dodge if you wish. Otherwise, you can just see how he goes. With a throw. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, what, what are you, you throwing? throwing? The giant, the, the spear? spear. Yeah, oh, definitely. Right. Is he right, over the water now? You said he's on the boat. He's on the boat. He's above you. Yeah. And does he have advantage with that spear, or is it only in melee? Uh, yeah, you can have advantage. Take a bonus die. It's magic or Sorry, humming or whatever. Die. It sinks. It's yeah, yeah. It loves killing. All right, I have rolled, James. How have you done? Um, I have passed. It's just success one. one. Okay, I have matched your success one. So unfortunately, ah. you throw the spear. It's not going to go over the edge, but it sinks into the mast and remains suspended there. As the bile covers you, you are going to take a d6, and please make a luck test. You take four damage. Uh, luck test, I... Yep. Fail. Oh, it wanted to be a zero three. 3 Yeah, alright, you are also, you are once again blinded for a D4 rounds. Alright. Oof. Boring. It's not looking amazing. Um, that's his turn. Nick, you needed to throw yourself to the side. Uh, William, you're up. You are blinded for two more rounds, I believe. You're at the uh, yeah, helm right, of the vessel, right. and you could hear the... As it regurgitated. Uh, no, I, think, I think I threw myself to the side on, my, on the last round. No, this was a, this no, no, was we're still on that round. We're yeah. still on that round oh, moving okay. through. Yeah, my bad. Uh, William? Do you want to try and get out of range of the slow. last goon? Otherwise, the last goon is on two health. You could just try and shoot him. Uh, I'm still blinded. I, can't, I don't think I can shoot that guy, can I? Not easily. I guess, I guess I'll have a shot at Fontanelli. 
or I'll try to get the... The, the goon you can potentially control. finish. He's, he's a lethal threat that we're not dealing with. Yeah, but the goon's further away. And I'm I blind. Uh, I, I think I can hear Fontanelli better. Hone in. That's what I feel. Echo yeah. location, channel the Vander Snake or Batter Snake or whatever. Yeah, that's All what right. I did. You channel the Batter Snake. The you uh, yep. So go for it. You are within point blank, so hmm. I think I. I've already established that ruling, so I think we're going to keep going with it. So just make it a straight roll. Very good. How'd you go? Uh, I'm trying to grab my dice. Failing. There it is. All right, cool. Uh, wait, I've had two shots. Should I be reloading? You can do the reload yeah. one and fire, oh, but you're one. limited. Cool. You can't do anything else. All right, here it goes. Ooh, that's flipping good. Extreme. Oh, dip. What's your that? That was exactly what we needed. An extreme success. You ten are under twelve. Hero. I'll tell you what. Two sessions in a row. William gets the big bad. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your what's your max damage? No reason. Well, uh, 46 is uh, 24. Oh, there's no way. That's, he's got 23 health. He's At the end of the day, he's just a boy. Oh, <laughs> my God. Wait, like, what? Whoa. He's just a man. He's just a man. He was overconfident. Oh. And he, as you, like, oh. fire up, Save it blasts through his body, bursting it like a bubble. You can see it trying to pull itself back together. He had regenerative abilities, but no armor to speak of. Blood splashes down on the side of the boat. You can see spikes of crystal beginning to form around it. And some of it actually lands in the water. The last uh, uh, member of his party throws himself to the ground and out of the way. <laughs> it's okay, Art. Uh, next time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, you are able to wipe the last of the ice from your eyes. And you can now see this deflated sack of a man on the ground. All of his bones are completely missing. It was like it was just an inflated bag, like a water balloon. And it's now lying sadly deflated on your vessel. Leopold Fontanelli is dead. You've been chasing him for like 10 sessions, <laughs> several weeks. But Brandon Sterling isn't here. And the fate of Argus, who was really the mastermind of it all still remains to be seen now before we resolve this last thing and before we see Edie moving out and beginning to head towards you I'm not sure if she has the car yet we might need to roll for that uh, you will also be able to find on Fontanelli a journal the orders he, he received from Argus and why he was up there and what they're currently doing I've got it but I'm going to hold that for next session for you guys. So we'll see Ooh. that when we come back. Last thing to note, Nick, you have been first aided by Art, who didn't have oh, quite enough to much. heal my <laughs> villain, what, but... <laughs> I really needed that. <laughs> uh, it's greatly appreciated. So I think we'll leave it there with Leopold Fontanelli's deflating corpse on the boat, Edie in the distance, hopefully bringing the car, and some orders uncovered, and the next step in sight. So thanks, guys, for playing. Bum, bum. I don't um, think that was. I don't think we were supposed to do that, you guys. <laughs> uh, I tell you what. I tell you what. I, I felt like we weren't supposed to do that because I am on one health. <laughs> <laughs> going up against the, gun. going up against what. the full force with uh, less than full forces on your side was definitely risky, but. No, yeah, I, I that, pay. Was, that was good. maybe a risk. We might, have, we maybe should not have done that. As I, as I pull, I'll pull you to your feet, uh, uh, Nick. And as we, as we check everyone's okay, what I'll do as well is I'll, uh, I'll give you my uh, pistol, and say, you know, you seem like a pretty good shot with this. Uh, just make sure you protect Mr. Van der Van with it. Oh, thank you. Are you sure you don't need it? Uh, I've got this, and I'll yank the spear out. The giant some spear. Cool -ass flourish. Almost <laughs> drop it. Pick it back up. Hell yeah, it's fucking awesome. All right, well, thanks guys for playing, and thank you everyone for watching. Um, we'll be back same time next week, but in the meantime, you can check out Mike Mason's The Dead Within stream. That'll be tomorrow at 8 p.m. in the UK, midday in the States, and 5 a.m. here in Australia. Otherwise, Which all states? the... Hey? Which, Which states? states? There are uh, the... 
They're like they're East, like I think. Look, once you get yeah. that close, they can run the numbers. That's, that's, that's their problem. Um, all the shows go up over the weekend. This one goes up on Friday. Theirs goes up on Sunday. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching and hope we catch you all soon. Cheers.